face and start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of power, too sweet to sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the wood. Hot damn. Welcome to the goods from the woods. My name is Rivers Langley. I'm... Pat Riley. This is a good night, men of the hour. Tower of power to sweet bizarre. And today we are joined uh, by uh, <laughs> by one of my good friends and uh, <laughs> hilarious, hilarious comedian. Say your name, buddy. Oh, okay. Oh, Jim Haggerty. Jim Haggerty is here. I didn't know here. I was supposed Again. to supply my name. Yeah, you know, I like to put him on the spot. No, uh, it's cool. No, we were just chomping at the bit, guys, well, because we're, 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 we are excited. We're like bulls trying to get out into, into rodeo now yeah. in the yard. <laughs> We'll ease into it. I, I just wanted to say I was uh, at the <laughs> Cafe Unurban open mic on Tuesday night. And I was Q hosting. Q was hosting. OK, and I got to figure out the situation. But I saw I saw Jim there and I mentioned that on this podcast, a lot of times we will reference a certain side project uh, from 1999. And I will always say one day we're going to do a full episode on this because it's one of the most fascinating events in pop music history. And uh, that day is here. And I'm talking about the 1999 I dare I say a uh, disaster. We're talking about Garth Brooks, a.k.a. Chris Gaines. Oh, this was a boondoggle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, uh, it, was, it was an ambitious implosion. Yeah. I, I think I want to. Um, oh. All right. Look, we're talking about its lack of commercial success here, but I won't point some out. Yeah. Now, there's all these Beach Boys records, like Wild Honey and things. Everybody yeah. considers a classic now, but it took time for people to grow on. I don't, I don't think it's a disaster in itself as just an album. I think it's a disaster in kind of everything that was sold around it, the big cloud that was surrounding the music. Yes. If Garth Brooks had just come out with a pop album and was like, I'm going to I'm gonna make a pop album, you could be like, okay, cool. Let's see how it is. Yeah. But yeah. this is a whole thing built around a movie that wasn't made. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a character. Oh, I, oh I've got That's, the whole that, that is, that is the, rub. the research. Rivers got that's notes, rub. y'all. Oh, I've, I've got the story. <laughs> Rivers uh, has done yeah. his research. So, so <laughs> the, thing that's, the thing about it is, is that, yeah, I think uh, Jim's point, I think just the take home early on is Jim's point's right on the money. If it was Garth Brooks making this album, right? Yeah. And he was just trying out something new. I mean, it's not like country music is so divorced from pop, like Nashville mm-hmm. country music is so divorced from pop that people would be like, oh, this is, this is betrayal. Like, I think some people would be on board with it. And if not, so so what? It's another album ticked yeah. off of the record contract. He could have been Taylor Swift of the aughts. Oh, but yeah. this really is could have been. this is why we're still talking about it, though, because yes, sure. anybody can have a pop crossover. Yeah. But only a genius can invent his own alter ego, which he then insists is real. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, so, so the way I want to get into this, I'm going to lay out the story. Do it. And as I go along, I want you guys to react to it. I have it all in chronological order. Great. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll be pulling up uh, uh, various clips so you can hear everything. But just to just to lay out the basics up top, and then after we we go over the story of the of the record, I I put it out to uh, to the Goods from the Woods universe on uh, on Twitter at the Goods Pod, and uh, we've got a couple of a uh, couple of questions. And and then we're we're gonna go into the psychology of it because I think cool. that that's really what we want to analyze. Oh, you've got a whole Chris Gaines evening planned for us. <laughs> well, yeah. listen, when I when I promise something for uh, since 2013, you know what I mean. We've been doing this podcast since September of 2013, and I've probably said we're gonna do a Chris Gaines episode at least ten times. So now we're finally doing it. So I was up all night just. <laughs> coffee and madness sitting here listening to this crazy shit so we'll go through the history of, of the chris gaines and, thing. and i just want to put a disclaimer on every, everything for the most part i'm going completely off of recall on this and yeah. i think jim is too so. i am yeah. too i mean like i remember a fair amount of it okay i will admit i have that album on my phone oh i know and i wanted to get to that yeah i i because de- I, because that's that's uh one of the i mean aside from the fact that jim is hilarious he also has a lot of firsthand experience with this record, but we'll go sure. through the we'll go through the story first, and then we're gonna weigh in. He the- was in the band Crush, everybody. <laughs> Jim the- Haggerty was I, that <laughs> dorky looking. Man. Yeah, I'm the bass player. <laughs> yeah. When you had long not the hair. one that dies in the plane crash. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. This is the Goods from the Woods presents in the life of Chris, Chris Gaines. Gaines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Garth Brooks was the highest paid solo performer of the 1990s. 
He was known for his high energy stage shows, which often featured him wearing a wrapper on headset mic, which made it easier for him to swing out over the audience on a rope like Tarzan. <laughs> you know, the way Hank would have done it. Well, the yeah. way Ted Nugent would have done <laughs> yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. His hits like Friends in Low Places, The Thunder Rolls, and Calling Baton Rouge had made Brooks one of the highest selling performers of all time, with over 70 million albums sold in the U.S. alone. Uh, that number has now grown to over 100 million records sold. It was 70 going into 99, and and now it's well over 100 now, million. I, I just want to ask right off the top are we a pro pro Garth? Are we generally pro Garth? That's a great here? question. My opinion on Garth Brooks has slid all the way across uh, from starting off, I was like, oh, he's pop country, he's bullshit. But honestly, uh, you know, he is a guy who, first of all, he, he didn't do a whole lot of writing. Uh, he is mostly uh, a man who benefited very greatly from the Nashville studio system yeah. of having uh, songwriters and, a, uh, and good management and everything like that. That said, the man is an entertainer. Oh, yeah. yeah. you know, I can give him so much credit for that. I, I don't think I would sit and be like, I own every one of his albums. I, I listen to probably his greatest hits. Yeah, and things like yeah. That. Those things are catchy. Those it's songs pop country, are very that, solid. That sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, No Fences and Rope in the Wind are all... Are, good albums yeah. and and i yeah i'm i'm pro garth i mean i don't yeah. like listen to garth brooks but it's like he doesn't offend my sensibilities no. he's like he's a salt and he's a fantastic entertainer and yeah. this is this is a thing that that i would assume is probably true across the country but is especially true in the south when Friends in Low Places comes on, that's one of those that people just sing along. Yeah, it's just, I it's remember a, the bar we were at over Christmas and they had karaoke and everybody done started singing. Yeah, it. when the music cuts off and the whole crowd goes, the Oasis goes, I got like that part. Sure. That's fun. It's fun to yeah, sing but along. I have to say, if you got Friends in Low Places and I have, it is not as great as Garth <laughs> <laughs> Uh So in February of 1999, Garth Brooks held a press conference where he had two equally strange announcements uh one he had signed with the san diego padres <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> he read the it was actually the boss and he read the wrong press release <laughs> he announced that he would skip the february 24th grammy award ceremonies in los angeles even though he was nominated for three awards to go to spring training in peoria arizona and brooks intended on the publicity using to help jumpstart his very weirdly named children's charity the Touch Em All Foundation. <laughs> That's the Jerry Sandusky was involved. Dude, you couldn't have picked a worse name <laughs> yeah. for a children. I mean, charity. it's like a baseball analogy. Sure, it's hitting a home run, which is always great. But uh, look, we're the ones taking it to the wrong place. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's That's just true. like, hey, it's a, it's like make, it's like you could also say make a wish is sort of like a threat. Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we've been yeah it's not that far from. Good point. Do you I feel mean, lucky. Well, yeah. Pokemon's was big at the time, right? And yeah. he figured instead of gotta get them all, let's touch them yeah. all. Well, I mean, this all. is this is we're living in a post Sandusky world. So like yeah. when we think, but this is the thing about it is a fallen world. This is the two. This is the two things I want to point out about this step. Right off the bat, this was the first four he had into spring training baseball. It was not the last because he did a couple of spring trainings with the uh, the Padres. He did one with the Mets and he did one with the Royals. It's so and crazy. the last one was the Royals in 2004. And he was kind of flirting with that, like, maybe I'll play pro baseball thing like Marvin Gaye was. Like, maybe I'll play for the Detroit Lions. And then <laughs> Marvin Gaye. Wait, Marvin, Marvin Gaye was going to yeah, play for the what yeah, position? He, uh, We're learning a lot here. Defensive back. No. He, he didn't. He, defensive he, back? Yeah, he was going to play. Is uh, Marvin Gaye not tall and lanky? Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's a defensive back. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. And this Does is back he not in make enough money but the being Marvin Gaye? He, he didn't make the team. And then he made what's going on. Uh, <laughs> Garth Brooks doesn't make the Padres. He makes it in the life of Chris Gaines. <laughs> but the uh, the thing that's crazy about it is is that wow, yeah, he and he was not good. Like I think in his four times playing spring training baseball, he got like three hits over four tenures. Yeah, um, was he, he on also, the same team as Jordan? Uh, no. Around this time, he also looked uh, scarily like Tom Colicchio from Top Chef. So he was <laughs> he was looking quite not. Gar he was looking a little bit beefy. Yeah, we'll just say. So that was that was the uh, that was the first announcement. Then Garth introduces Kenneth Babyface Edmonds. Who was You're, huge at the time? Who yes. was like, uh, yeah, Babyface was huge at the time. There's a couple of songs 
on that album where you go like, oh, that's totally a Babyface song. Yeah, like, that's yeah. a song that was produced. Remember, uh, "Change the World" with yeah. Eric Clapton. Uh, yeah, that was a Babyface thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, producing all the famous yeah. people at the time because didn't he work with the Rolling it Stones? Gave, it gave a, yes. the R and B feel to that. In very much in the way, yeah, very much the way that like Pharrell was ubiquitous. Mm-hmm. Like Babyface was even more so. So they bring out Babyface and uh, they bring out producer Don Was of uh, Walk the Dinosaur uh, fame and was not was fame yeah, was, was not, not was. was yeah and uh at this point they unfurl a huge curious banner which features uh garth brooks on an album cover looking a bit like robert smith fuck george harrison uh and <laughs> he's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing a black wig with hair in his face and a glued on soul patch just below his lip <laughs> The I album, thought it was real until tonight. The album cover bore the notorious words that would topple an icon and flash out like a lightning bolt across the landscape of popular music, warning other stars and starlets against vanity-driven excess for a hey, generation to come. Hey, The Adventures of Mimi by uh, Mariah Carey, she didn't get the memo. <laughs> yeah. Those words read, Garth Brooks, in the life of Chris Gaines. But the world was never the same. The world was never the same. I mean, first of all, I love the audacity that he's like, you know, I play baseball now. Also, here's the craziest thing I've ever done. Oh, you well, think that was the shock? He's creating a persona, and he chooses like a generic ass name, like Chris Gaines. Right? Chris Gaines sells you a car at a Chevy dealership. Yes, like hundred percent. It doesn't. It's not like Ziggy Stardust. <laughs> no, it's like what the right. hell? That's what I was gonna say. Like ten years later, uh, Beyonce is Sasha Fierce. Yeah, like, Sasha Fierce is Come a on, badass Sasha name. Fierce, Sasha Fierce is a name she probably stole from a drag queen. Right. Like that's I want to hear. A badass but this name. is. Yeah. A, but I want to hear what Sasha. Well, but here's the say. thing, but Chris Gaines, the, the Chris Gaines motif, the costume was as pretty much as plain as the oh, name. Yeah. Well, it, he well, looked like pro wrestler Jimmy Jacobs. <laughs> well, you said it was a fake soul patch. I mean, how long does it take to grow a soul patch? Yeah. yeah. Well, and by the way, uh, just, oh, this is totally glued on. Like it, yeah. the way it was like, man, it, it was. He didn't just have like, a week to grow one of them or he things. He didn't even draw one no. on. Right. Well, it's, it's it, it, the reason I, I, I'm not positive. It's, it's glued on. I just ascertained this because uh, watching the fake behind the music, which we're going to get into in just a moment. Oh, when he put it on immediately. Sometimes it's on. Sometimes it's off. So we wore a fake goatee like the pharaohs of egypt yeah yeah exactly okay. garth brooks is from where tulsa oklahoma yes that's right. okay so like imagine asking a random guy in tulsa it's like all right you're gonna play like an interesting badass guy what are you gonna call yourself and like it's either gonna be two options they're either gonna go with i think chris Gaines, right they would either be something that's like a cooler version of an absolutely like mundane name where it's like kind of cool sounds like a a football player or like somebody that owns a a, a car dealership or yeah, something yeah. like that or like the guy who lives next door and got arrested like, for exposing yeah, yeah, himself yeah. or they would just be like or they just be like yeah big dick thunderfuck like they were just like it's <laughs> chris two gaines levels. is the one guy that he knows that wears owns leather pants yeah, exactly. i was gonna say if, if you add a middle name to chris gaines <laughs> it's he I is a hundred percent a serial killer it's like the tulsa ripper also yeah. known as chris Wayne Gaines. You're like, oh God. <laughs> Christopher Edward Gaines killed seven people before the, the authorities caught up to him. He was driving around in an old caprice. It's that unnotable of a name, you know. <laughs> when questioned by the police, he said maybe it's the Catholics. Well, maybe but here's it's the, the thing. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say, like, the unoriginal uh, unoriginality of that name. Like you were saying, uh, we'll talk about the uh, behind the music that's oh, yeah. completely fake. That is how generic the behind the music is. Yes. It's yeah. so like they talk about his sex addiction and they're like, dude, he was it was crazy. Sometimes I'd show up to his hotel room and I'd be like, two girls or three girls. No, or no, four, four girls. girls like, or- Five girls. Throw a dude in there or something. Okay. Okay. Yeah, make it actually exciting. Well, was mean, it all at once? I, oh, it's it's just the word. We're, we're, it's we're, we're good. Yeah. Well, because we're good with the with the Def Leppard behind the music, where they talk about similar levels of people having sex, it was like some guy that was just like, it was just mothers and daughters. It was like <laughs> yeah. Fellini satirical. Well, yeah, you know? go underneath like, the, they'd be like they do. Uh, yeah, they'd yeah. be underneath the stage, and there'd be girls waiting to like blow. But it's like, but like, they did have the one leg drummer though. The, but then it's like some this. dude that looks like friggin' Andy <laughs> Dick, Andy Dick that's just like. Yeah, you just go into his apartments. It's like two girls, three girls, yeah. four girls, 
five girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the depth to which you're just like, oh, God, they think that's as exciting and crazy as it gets. Right. Okay, can, 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 can I can make a point about Chris Kane? Yeah, yeah. You asked earlier, <laughs> did you like Garth Brooks, right? Yes. Was I pro Garth? And I'm, I was kind of like you, Rivers. I didn't like no country music made after 1980. Yeah. Garth Brooks, I wasn't in people. You know, I didn't like pop country neither. Yeah. yeah. But when he came out with this Chris Gaines idea, like I said, yeah. anybody can make a pop album. Yes. Sure. But there's a certain level of genius to say, no, this is by this alter ego. And even though I'm the most famous person in the world, I'm going to put yeah. on a very unconvincing disguise. Yeah. 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 <laughs> with just <laughs> any old name and insist to the world that I'm that person. Yeah. So Garth Brooks goes on to explain that the album was to be a pre soundtrack for a film that he was working on called The Lamb. And now I should explain that in the late 90s, uh, Garth Brooks was uh, supposedly wanting to get into the movie business in a big way. Uh, this is according to a 2013 deposition in a lawsuit filed against Garth Brooks for lost earnings. His ex business partner at his production company, which again, real bad at, uh, at naming things, his production company was called red strokes entertainment more like brown marks am i right guys <laughs> exactly <laughs> hi to <too. laughs> lisa sanderson alleges that steven spielberg offered brooks a role as the sniper in the 1998 movie saving private ryan <laughs> that that i would have loved to have seen that, that role was eventually taken by barry pepper if you remember the sniper who shoots the guy through the scope into the german's yeah. eye yeah that was going to be garth brooks but <laughs> Uh, he refused to sign on to the deal because he, quote, wanted to be the star of the movie and was unwilling to share the limelight with Tom Hanks and Matt Damon. So he wanted to win World War II all by himself. A first time yeah. actor was like, I'm bigger than Tom Hanks. <laughs> so uh, and the lawsuit also documents how he allegedly turned down the part of a bad guy in 1996's Twister uh, for the same reason. He claims that he turned that down because he didn't want to take second place to a fucking tornado. <laughs> Really? It makes sense. I love that. Okay. I, she would go on to describe that Garth Brooks as an egomaniac before ultimately losing her lawsuit. I would not imagine Garth Brooks being an egomaniac like that. Me neither. He always seemed like a friendly guy. Well, you know what? I don't know Garth Brooks in any regard, so I wouldn't. Maybe he is one of those people where it's like behind closed doors. He's like, if you ever do that shit to me again, I yeah. swear to God. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's that thing where, like, I would hope if I ever met him, he was like, a yeah. nice, gracious person. <laughs> and maybe that lady is just trying to win a <laughs> so, lawsuit. Who knows? Listen, listen Alan this. Jackson crossed me and I cut off his mullet. So <laughs> <laughs> you thought he just got a haircut. He crossed Garth. <laughs> so here's, here's another interesting uh, wrinkle. So, according to an interesting side story offered by Stevenson, uh, she recounted Garth's behavior in a pitch meeting with Paramount amounts. Garth had stated that the film's music was especially important to him because the music expressed many of the same feelings that Garth Brooks had felt when his own father had died. And then he began weeping. And this is from the Above the Law blog, quote, Sanderson was thunderstruck and nearly fell out of her chair <laughs> and, and nearly fell out of her chair during the meeting since she knew that Brooks' father was alive and in Oklahoma. <laughs> After the meeting, Sanderson confronted Brooks and told him that she was stunned that he would lie about his father dying. And Brooks looked Sanderson in the eye, chuckled, and said, but don't you think it made the pitch that much better? <laughs> kayfabe. kayfabe. That's, that was what was so great about Chris what Gaines. It was yeah. Kayfabe. Absolutely. Uh, so even if Stevenson made all that up, we can't infer uh, how completely headfirst Garth uh, jumped into the Lamb project by how badly he wanted to be a movie star. The movie was written by Jeb Stewart, and the, he was the screen The Confederate General? Yeah, no. It was, he was the, <laughs> what was it about? The Battle of Yellow Tavern or something? <laughs> he was the screenwriter of Die Hard and The Fugitive, and when Brooks was offered the role, he took it upon himself to develop an elaborate backstory for his character the life and story of chris Gaines, the fictional discography his look everything was all about creating a universe for the lamb and uh, the screenwriter stewart eventually had to leave the project due to family illness and brooks took over the writing duty himself <laughs> so basically <laughs> of course that's where that's where the egomaniac part exactly. of me i wouldn't assume like that's like going into a band and be like I, I feel like i should be the drummer do you know how to play drums uh, not really like you, it, yeah. The, I could just write a whole. Script. Well, knowing the way his ego is, he might have turned down being the drummer because the guitarist gets more attention. Right. Well, and again, first of all, I should say up front, all of this is from a lawsuit from a disgruntled employee. Yeah. Right. Sure. But if we can do like we always do when there's when there's two sides of the story come somewhere right in the middle sure. and the way i'm looking at this is essentially you're talking about a guy who according to these allegations held out for a leading part yeah and then he got his leading part and upon getting that opportunity was just like 
I'm doing everything. And yeah. and, and then had to, well, he, had to he, seize it from He's there. also run his whole show probably for the, la- the the previous 10, 15 years. Of course. That totally makes sense. Like, yeah. it's like, he, I don't think anyone wants to jump back and take a small little role. No. You could be the lead. If you be the star in their first yeah, movie. Yeah, no one wants yeah. to start uh, opening for bands again. Question, yeah. uh, Rivers, what are you wearing right now? I don't want to sound too forward. The uh, Prince t-shirt. The Prince Purple Rain t-shirt. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. So musicians a have kid. had a history yeah. of starring in their first movie. Yeah, that could be a success. Yeah, that's right. Eight True. Mile, Purple Rain. I mean, shit. That, well, yeah. imagine this, though. Like, imagine if, like... Yeah. A year before, uh, before Eight Mile came out, yeah, like Eminem holds a press conference. He's like, "I'm B Rabbit," <laughs> like, right? Yeah, yeah. He exactly. would have to make an album and go on Saturday Night Live and yeah. give interviews where he pretends yeah. to be Bunny Rabbit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the, the, the but uh, then also does like he's in the interviews and stuff surrounding this album release. He was very much like, "Wink, wink." This is weird, right? Like you're. It's like he yeah. didn't. He should have just. Kept his head down, been like, I don't know, I've never met this guy. He's like, Harry's amazing, though. Yeah, right. that, like, yeah. no. And the thing is, is that he's also been like, he probably feels that his creativity has been squelched by the Nashville machine, right? Yeah. He's been part of this Nashville factory for years and years and years and years, and he probably is surrounded by a, a cadre of yes men oh, that we're are. We're gonna like, get into that. Yeah, <laughs> that he's probably like, he he seizes the opportunity. He's like, I'm gonna show everybody. That I'm not just a face. I'm not just. I actually have some gravitas. It's yeah. time to do something that's really me. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to become right. Chris Gaines. <laughs> so, uh, so surprisingly, very little information has trickled out about the Lamb over the years. And from what I could gather, uh, Chris it's good with mint jelly. Chris <laughs> Chris Gaines was uh, supposedly not the main focus of the movie, The Lamb. In several interviews, Garth and his uh, producers referred to the movie as a quote thriller about an obsessed fan. And this is from a, a, a blog they did on a stereo gum about the whole Chris Gaines uh, fiasco. Quote, uh, Brooks concocted Chris Gaines as a sort of rock and roll citizen Kane, a mysterious figure cloaked in shadow, already dead in the opening scene of The Lamb, yeah. and glimpsed only in flashbacks. Well, the acting is easier that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the film's protagonist would be a diehard fan convinced that Gaines had been murdered, possibly for the sins of his fans. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it's, high concept. Right? Oh my god! Though Brooks obviously took on the on-stage character of Chris Gaines, he was always uh, sort of fuzzy on whether or not he'd actually be the one to play Gaines on screen. And at one point, he said that he thought Steven Tyler would make a great Chris Gaines <laughs> because, quote, he's gorgeous, skinny, and lots of hair. He had a boner for Aerosmith because if you remember, <laughs> he covered an Aerosmith song on one of his albums, Fever. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that was a he, crappy. But 90s he like Aerosmith he like wrote, he wrote it, it up. Yeah, but his like, version yeah. I think was actually better. It's, fun. Uh, there, uh, it's on his uh, double live album. It's actually a fun. I mean, like if you're, I guarantee you, if you're in an arena full of people, that's a fun ass. I'll song. take it over the Aerosmith "Get a Grip" version any day. Oh yeah, yeah. which song? Uh, Fever. The Fever. Oh, yeah, it was like yeah, an yeah. album track from one of their '90s albums. Yeah, yeah. 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 And he was also he, hadn't he like re, like maybe in the mid '90s he'd covered Kiss. Yeah, it was on a Hard Luck when Woman or something. Tribute albums were yeah, the big yeah, things. Yeah. yeah, he was on the Kiss tribute album. So I think that kind of probably got his fires burning. And he'd covered he'd covered Billy Joel and like done some. Kinda, well, yeah, well, yeah. you know, it's just like you remember y'all said we bought up Oklahoma, right? Yeah, that's where he's from. I snuck into the Continental Breakfast at the Hampton Inn on Garth Brooks Boulevard. <laughs> well, see, th- that's exactly the point. Now, God bless like <laughs> real American red, white, and blue places like that. Yeah, but yeah. to be fair, they're not always on the cutting edge of hip. Yeah, yeah. And in the '90s, what was hip was like Nirvana, Soundgarden, Snoop Dogg, yeah. which. Oh, go ahead. You're, well, he's from Oklahoma, yeah. so he yeah, gets yeah, a yeah. secondhand yeah, version he, of he this. He looks like, yeah, he looks like a shitty Dave Navarro. That's he looks what he like looks he was, like. He looked like he saw, like, uh, Lollapalooza and was like, damn, I want to be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of, if you look at the way, especially since this is the greatest hits album of Chris yeah, Gaines, yeah. you look at certain ones, there's clearly, like, the his first band's kind of like In Excess, kind of yeah. like the Beatles-ish sounding. There's, like, a song in there that's very Fleetwood Mac sounding. It's like, yeah. they clearly like I like that. I'll have some of that. Uh, it's like they went through the rock and roll buffet. No, totally. And started to put shit on their plate. No, I, ju- I just imagine him like w- with the, the how much he kind of resembles Dave Navarro. He watched a video for like Warped, yeah. you know, where they're wearing like the leather speedos and shit, and he's just like. I want to do that. So he got like leather pants with flames on them and shit. <laughs> yeah. And they looked in the mirror and he's just like, mm, maybe not. 
<laughs> so the one thing that's inescapable when talking about the Chris Gaines debacle is the politics of Capitol Records Nashville at the time. Uh, the Garth Brooks was by far their biggest selling artist. Uh, some of the new blood in the company considered him hard to deal with. And there were several turnovers in management at the time. And some looked at the other newer stars withering due to the oxygen being sucked up by Brooks. One of the rising stars singled out by management as having huge potential that was stifled by the emphasis placed on Brooks. It was Keith Urban. Uh, Keith Urban's first album with uh, Capitol Nashville was released almost one month after the Chris Gaines album and only reached number 145 on the Billboard charts. And uh, Keith Urban, of course, would go on to be one of the most successful country stars of the 2000s. One interesting piece of information is that in his fictional autobiography, Chris Gaines was supposedly born in 1967 in Brisbane, Australia. Keith Urban was born in 1967 and raised near Brisbane, Australia. He was scooping his heat, he man. He was fucking <laughs> That's what Keith it was. Urban because he saw him as a young dog on the rise and he was like, fuck you. And Keith, and Keith Urban kind of looks like Chris Gaines. Yes. They have a very similar look because yeah. Keith Urban got had a fucking that, soul patch. He had that. So he was basically taking his character yes like he was to build his character he was just like i'm just gonna do keith urban right yeah he i think he, he figured out something significant oh here. oh yeah yeah no uh chris gaines is uh chris gaines is razor ramon to keith urban scarface no didn't he's no he's to... fake razor ramon to... <laughs> didn't they try to also say like chris gaines was supposed to be like in his early 30s and like Garth Brooks is like in his early 40s at that time. Well, it, actually, no, here's the thing. Garth is actually only five years older than Keith Urban. Okay. So he's only playing five years younger. So the 1967 birth date can really be seen as a direct fuck you to Keith Urban. Yeah. Because they're not that much different in age. I you know? thought it might have been a summer of love thing. Uh, well, that's that's <laughs> that's a because potential don't forget thing. he did have that. 60s ideology if you will oh yeah yeah, yeah. But he had the most in the behind the music he had the most straight-laced mom in the world oh yeah 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 she, all right the first single of the album uh, was is called lost in you and it was released on july 19th 1999 let's hear a little uh, sample oh i love the little like here comes the false the setup. bongos that are in every like baby face produced song it's like there's no more it's got such a change the world vibe to it. Yeah. Yeah. This sounds like if you're in Starbucks, this is 100% what's playing in the background and you've never noticed it. <laughs> you know? Uh, so the first single, Lost in You, was released July 19th, 1999. Now, this is weird. Capital Nashville made the decision not to focus on the country market and not to give the single to any country radio stations. And uh, the song did reach number five on the Billboard charts, and the album Garth Brooks and the Life of Chris Gaines uh, was released in September of 1999, uh, but in its first week only sold 200,000 copies. Uh, this was at a time when he was like a million in a week. Yeah, yeah and this was a, this was a time where like nowadays if you sell 200,000 copies in the first week, that's like monster yeah, in this yeah. today's market. That's like not even going to get you in the top 10 like well pre napster be... the you know yeah. records moved yeah, yeah. oh yeah well, so 200,000 is, yeah. is paltry especially right. for somebody like uh Garth Brooks that's like that's next to nothing where you know you might hear that and think oh this is a lot especially in today's market that's nothing yeah well and the record i should say has gone on to sell about 2 million copies which <laughs> now, which now sounds like a runaway hit but at the time it's the biggest dip well, in Garth are, Brooks' sale. Again, like Wild Honey or some other lost classic. Yeah. People well. have come to appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I wanted to talk about one of the tracks because this was this threw me for a loop because, again, I was researching this all night. Sure. And I was so tired. And I kept hearing Garth Brooks refer to this songwriter uh, where he said uh, there's a song on the record called It Don't Matter to the Sun. Which mm -hmm. was uh, that song is blatantly like a we gotta give the country people like at least one one track that sounds country right and it's, it's a cover yeah it's well it's posited as a it's I'll a cover of a band that doesn't exist <laughs> and this is why it drove me up the goddamn wall is because it's two in the morning i'm doing research for the fucking podcast and he says in this interview he goes oh well uh and as garth by the way mm -hmm. not as chris Gaines. he goes oh well uh it don't matter the sun it's uh it's a cover of a song by Ramsey Sellers, uh, who's uh, one of Gaines' dad's favorite singers. And, you know, I remember my father having Ramsey Sellers eight tracks in the car, you know, and and uh, 
there will never be another singer like Ramsey Sellers because uh, Garth fucking made him up. Oh, yeah. and nice. I didn't know that, and so I was like, "Who is Ramsey Sellers?" And I'm googling, and it's just coming I, up with I like do a like random. That that's like a real like that sounds like a country He's guy. Like, how long gonna t- how long were you looking for this guy, Ramsey? About ten to fifteen minutes, like before I figured out because there is no and reference somewhere to- out there. No, Garth no, cracks a smile. There's, and a- there's a, an article from Billboard fucking magazine where uh, this fucking reviewer chet flippo who i later found it is dead so i'm sorry to it's the not just of- another alter ego for I, dude, Garth Brooks. this shit is so crazy i can't figure this out i'm like i'm turning into the guy from network in my bedroom just like <laughs> it's all lies i'm mad as hell at chris you, gaines wait, yeah, and i'm not gonna take it anymore i knew it was a it was a lie it was the behind the music where he, there's this part in that where he goes he's like my, my dad passed away and like i covered the song for my mom because he she didn't have someone to sing it to her anywhere and i was like that sounds like bullshit. Like, yeah. It just sounded like <laughs> such bullshit. But this this is a real article. Yeah. This is an actual fucking article. So from, you're saying, Rivers, it's fake news. From Billboard magazine, and this Chet Flippo fuck makes a reference <laughs> to Ramsey Sellers as if it's real. This was in Billboard. You were punked by Chris Gaines, Rivers. I am but... so furious. And if you listen to the song, this is the, the supposed song, by the way. It don't matter to Song. And you were exactly the country right. Song, this yeah. is the country song. Yeah, it's yeah the, totally. It, they just wanted a song that if would go to the country market. This Otherwise, is, people felt betrayed. This is the ripcord. Yeah. If this whole experiment doesn't work, we could send this out to country stations. <laughs> but to be fair, Rivers, have you ever heard the original? It's much better. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the thing, the thing with, uh, with... Yeah, but Ramsey Sellers has a voice from heaven. <laughs> yeah, but try dragging down one of them Ramsey Sellers records nowadays. <laughs> oh, you know how you were asking about... um. Uh, with he had an album out. He released a Christmas album, at like this. two months later. Yeah, like two months later, like yeah. almost like a sorry, 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 sorry. Watch, sorry. watch, watch Ramsey Sellers be like Rodriguez, <laughs> where it's just like he actually did exist, and he was followed very heavily in Lebanon. Like, you know, but the thing with Ch- Chet Flippo is that in a lot of the uh, trade press stuff, like Billboard, a lot of the things that they do is they just basically print off of press releases. Because they have right. to, they basically have yeah. to make an entire and and Billboard isn't a bunch of spreadsheets. There's actual articles in there, and a lot of times where if it isn't the critics, if it's like news, they would just get a, a press release from you know this uh, seems to me Capital is- Nashville and just be like, all right. This is cool. like an well, elaborate prank. Well, this that's being thing played on everybody. Considering there's the behind the music, they did all like he was the guest on Saturday Night Live. All of these things, I kind of feel like this was them playing along. Like that, yeah, of course he's a real guy. He's not a real guy, but <laughs> they really were on board. I, uh, not to give Garth Brooks any ideas or anything, yeah. but uh, maybe this next album should be just called "The Ghost of Ramsey Sellers." Like that'd oh, be kind of great. Just a whole album of Ram, <laughs> quote unquote, Ramsey Sellers. Yeah, it's songs. like try it like, again. A purported yeah. album of old country classics yeah, that his daddy like just, used. Yeah, yeah it's like, like a, it's on. like a Melvin Pontiac album or something yeah, like that. Yeah, in the life of Ramsey Sellers, <laughs> <Yeah>. coming twenty nineteen. <laughs> so. If you're listening, Garth. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but I'm not saying it's a bad idea. (laughs) So September 29th, the day after the uh, album's release, NBC aired the most convoluted TV special since the Star Wars holiday special. Garth Brooks sings Chris Gaines. Garth Brooks in the life of Chris Gaines. (laughs) (laughs) Now, there's clips online. There's clips. Other than that, there ain't shit about this. The evidence of this thing existing is IMDb has one entry for it. And I was able to find four clips online. I, uh, I watched it when it was on. You watched it live? The thing, it, well, yeah, well, it was, it was broadcast on NBC, but I remember watching it. And the reason I do remember, the thing that is most prominent is one, he like gives the finger to the camera at one point. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a whole story about how his face gets mangled in a car Chris accident. Gaines gives the finger a lot. We'll get into yeah, that yeah. during the behind the music. I didn't and know his then, face was mangled. Oh, well, yeah. Is oh, that way yeah. where's a pretend we'll soul patch oh, to handle oh, a Oh, my God. We're, scar? Yeah. It's we're getting thing. there. That's the craziest part of this but whole thing. <laughs> the the reason I remember it is because I was I played guitar. I still play guitar. But when I, I remember just being like, Anything I watch, I was stare at the guitar player. The guitar player has a seven up green colored Eric Clapton Stratocaster, and that is the thing I remember of that whole special. Is that guy like? Oh, see, had... I, I thought you were gonna say he has a make seven up yours shirt on. No, which it's, would be it, very era appropriate. It's just, it's like it, I know it's an Eric Clapton strat because it's the only strat that came in that green color. Oh, it's like yeah. a bitch and guitar. Years. It is. I mean, it's a really cool yeah. looking. They guitar. call it reptile green. Yeah. But it's like I, that. I don't know why. It's just my brain remembers that. Uh, the special features interviews where Garth is speaking in third person about both Chris Gaines and himself and there's a section 
there's a section where there's a section where he is trying there's a section where he is trying to explain the concept of Chris Gaines but as Garth Brooks and it is th- this is a man teetering on the brink of fucking madness. There is just no other way to talk about levels this. of schizophrenia. It is this is this is fucking insane. So this is from the NBC Chris Gaines special. <laughs> he looks like Garth Brooks dressed up as a he goth like, for he Halloween. Looks like He's Brandon Garth Brooks. Lee in the Crow. I think that's a damn good looking man right there. Huh? <laughs> I gotta say, the crowd reactions in those, you're like, oh, that's gotta be embarrassing for some of those people to like be like, I went to that special. Yeah, we see you really enjoying yourself (laughs) a little too much. Embarrassing or a badge of honor at this point, because that makes you a Chris Gaines hipster. If uh, I've seen him in concert, and he's always happily gracious and like yeah. just sort of like, wow, I'm really excited. Thanks so much for coming out. It means the world to us. And you're like, you said that last night. Yeah, yeah, like, well, <laughs> that, I was surprised. You know his stage demeanor better. So he's because because from what little I've seen on TV, he seemed like that. He was very friendly and polite. Yeah, and it stuff. seems like a, I I can almost guarantee you the minute he walks off stage, he's probably not like, yeah, great. Like he's probably tr- dials it down. But he's not like this between songs, is he? No, but I think that's probably just him like. I, I mean, that's him trying to. He has to explain this. And he's yeah, and, either and, giddy or. All right, let's be like, fair. Let's nervous. be fair to singers. They don't know how to talk, and it's hard to address an audience of a million people you can't see yeah. anyway. So whenever you hear singers try to explain these songs in between songs, unless it's the guy from uh, what's his name, Storytellers, the guy from the Kinks. Ray oh, Davies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of them can't do it. Yeah. He's trying to explain it, but he also is sort of nervous about how it kind of probably he's like, I don't know if this sounds ridiculous or not. Yeah. I, I'll give him the credit that it's probably he's just sort of like, I don't know. Like, it could very well be. We were all on the ride together, really. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and the special is like bizarre for a lot of reasons. There's the, the section where he's on stage talking about it. And one thing, by the way, I just suspect that Garth Brooks is just a sweaty man in general, but he's sure. usually wearing a cowboy hat, which yeah. probably has like a sham wow or something in it that oh, absorbs yeah. it. But in this, he's wearing a weird uh, Zorro outfit. And uh, so he's, he's almost Steven Seagal's clothes. Yeah, It's almost yeah. like he's halfway between Chris Gaines and himself. Yes. Well, that was the thing for the for the uh, album art cover art and all those things. He apparently lost a bunch of weight and then he like he's clearly thinner than he normally was yeah. at the time. But he their, then talks yeah. about like. Uh, on the album cover, like sucking in his cheeks and stuff like that. So yeah. he didn't lose as much weight as he wanted. Oh, sure. To. Yeah. Well, he, he has to be baseball beefy. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the NBC special is punctuated just so you understand that it is Garth Brooks has all these like interview segments where it's him in the cowboy hat trying to explain Chris Gaines. Yeah. And I just wanted to play this one little clip because it's insane. Probably the most asked question that I get about Chris Gaines is what's it like to play? two different people and, and the answer is first let's get one thing straight I'm not playing two different play, people I'm playing one uh, the Garth Brooks thing is just who I am the Chris Gaines thing though the closer you look and the more you find out you realize he sounds Chris crazy. Gaines is Garth Brooks so all it is is a stretching of the arms and all it is is taking like Garth Brooks and Chris Gaines and putting them together. This all makes sense to me. This is like him trying to be your therapist, <laughs> and here you go, I don't know how I feel about this whole Chris Gaines, Garth Brooks thing. He's just like, it's the you know, same But guy. when you get to be as big as a Garth Brooks, though, you can kind of be trapped in the Garth Brooks prison. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't want to wear the big shirt and the hat and the Madonna microphone and sing the white line. Maybe inside, he wants to rock and roll. I think that... Uh, I. I kind of agree. Like you, he probably really wanted to put out a pop album because he he likes probably a lot of different types of music. Then it came down to, yep. well, you can't. We're not Garth Brooks is a country. Like that's we that's the that? brand. We can't market that. Well, I guess we could come up with this other problem. Is he like turned it into an enterprise? Well, it's it's very very similar to the uh, origins of Sergeant Pepper. Sure. And please don't kill me for this on Twitter. But that is literally Paul McCartney and John Lennon sat down. They're like. Okay, being the Beatles sucks. Yeah. Well, let's be other. Let's be someone else. And obviously, that that record started off, and I, you know, I will say is not really a full on concept record, sure. but definitely started off with that idea of like let's be another band. But to be fair, how many other concept records are part of some aborted bigger project too? Like who's next and all these things. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, who's next was supposed to be a rock opera called Lifehouse. So. Well, like 
the best version of what he is a, like Garth Brooks is attempting to do is what David Bowie did with most of his career. He just kind of had over. different M- personas. Madonna too, yeah. Yeah, it's like you can give them all the credit in the world. They just did it in a way he kind of half-assed the execution he of it. He did it clumsily. But yeah. We we were just not talking about the fact that Garth Brooks <laughs> Does not blink when he's talking about this. <laughs> that and brings the, the cocaine talking, idea so back in. My thing is, is that this is an allegory for the fact that he's been co-opted. There's, there's Garth Brooks that's been co-opted by the machine, i.e., the Illuminati or the Nashville right? establishment. That, that, like Garth Brooks is his reptilian self, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. That's been taken over. And then on the other side is Chris Gaines, his true self, and he's trying to break free. Of the shackles, yeah. I, I agree, Pat. Yeah. Except you, if you get rid of the reptile part <laughs> and replace the Illuminati with the Nashville establishment, yeah. maybe he felt like you're trying to put me in a box. But hey, I'm not just some rube with a, with a cowboy hat whose head looks like a thumb. I'm, I'm rock and roll. <laughs> I'm motherfucking Chris Gaines, baby. What, yeah. do you, what do you think the odds are that he went home to his wife and was like? Tonight you gotta have sex with Chris. <laughs> oh, dude, that's why she, oh, she pretended like she was cheating too. Yeah, that's why probably, she divorced him. And the him. thunder rolls. Yeah. <laughs> and the thunder rolls. And then he's also playing baseball. That's the other thing that's crazy. Where All he's this like, crazy shit is happening. And then there's baseball, and that is why. And and I I wondered about this, and that's actually how I fell backwards into figuring out the whole thing about the San Diego Padres. There's a big gap between February when they announced Chris Gaines. And July when they dropped the first album. So you were like, because he was at spring training. Well, you're a conspiracy theorist, and you were up all night trying to figure out the Chris Gaines conspiracy. And I think this was around <laughs> the time where the where the Padres were in those ugly like desert camo. <laughs> so, uh, uh, that might be the most ridiculous thing that well, they Garth wanted- Brooks wore. <laughs> An e- an they even, wanted to dress like Storm and Norman. Yeah. An even crazier f- time refer- frame of reference is probably when they were recording this, the 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 live version of the Chris Gaines songs. He was probably working on that Christmas album. <laughs> like so, he was basically like like have yourself a Merry Christmas, and then he like leaves the studio, goes to rehearse these like gimmick songs. You know what like I rock I, songs. You know what I Good actually. Point. He could have been like, well, this isn't working like I thought. I'd yeah, really better like, sing Jingle Bells tonight. Yeah, you like, know what I actually do think about the Christmas album, and this is actually. Actually, uh, borne out by pretty much all Christmas records mm-hmm. is it's you, good around Christmas. You were contractually obligated to cut those, and they will just put them away and wait until they need them for something. So he probably had that album in the bank, and after the Chris Gaines thing, it was like we need this out uh, yeah. immediately. It was like in case of glass, like September oh, to November. Yeah. It's like oh yeah. god, this has been. And a in bad fact, they weeks. they probably angled the Chris Gaines release where it was in case it was a failure, so they could then put out the Christmas this album i like how we've all turned into like record marketing executives the reason why he's not blinking i just put it together (laughs) he has no eyelids they were surgically no 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 check this out all right think of the time period he's playing baseball right there is he's trying to get into baseball shape after losing all that weight for chris Gaines. so he's been taking like performance enhancing drugs (laughs) And he's taking all sorts of ephedra and stuff he's because that was allowed. He was he's on the gas he's on and the he's gas. taking ephedra, and that's why he can't blink because that was the time in which people. It was like basically the monster factory in baseball. Yeah, yeah. It so was the juice ball era. Yeah, exactly. So he's all like jacked up on yeah. Balco. If Randy stuff, Johnson throws him a hundred mile an hour fastball over the plate, yeah, he's so, got to hit that thing. So he's taking so steroids. Did. And he's taking a Fedra so he can eat like whatever he wants. He yeah. doesn't have to diet. That's why he's not blinking, and that's why he's sweating so much. Is because he's on the fu- the freaking juice, the so, baseball. So you're juice. saying you're saying Chris Gaines sold two million records, but that needs an asterisk next to it. Ex- exactly. <laughs> okay, exactly. He's but, not making it into Cooperstown. But think about Garth. I mean, I I kind of agree that it might be a thing like where it's like <laughs> even if he's not taking like steroids, maybe he's just like creatine in the shit out of his life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but. Think Chris Gaines is roid rage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that makes totally you have impossible. funny ideas. Seriously, well, but think about how okay, how busy he must have been at that time making the Chris Gaines album, and then like just all this stuff. He's going to be a movie star. Every level, of that. and then like a couple years later, he's like, I'm "Just going to hang out with my daughters," and let's like fucking quit. Yeah, like, it's, just, it's a very weird. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a very bipolar thing. Like, oh, I, like, I, I want to get into the, the postscripts because that is maybe the most interesting part. But mm-hmm. uh, the first thing I wanted to mention and uh, shout out to uh, my buddy Matty P, uh, aka Percival. Pringle the third on Twitter. Uh, 
uh, hit me up and, <laughs> and wanted to make sure uh, that I touched upon this. All right. So after a disappointing special, uh, the first week of sales, the albums were not good. You'd think that Brooks, Babyface, and Waz would cut their losses and move on, but they absolutely did not do that. The Chris Gaines experiment dragged on into the fall, punctuated by two of the most confusing TV appearances in history. The first being uh, November 13th, 1999, on the stage of Saturday Night Live, Don Pardo introduced musical guest Chris Gaines and your host, Garth Brooks. That's just sunk cost fallacy out perfectly. And the album has failed. Yeah. The the Titanic's compartments have been breached. The boat is sinking. Two months later, they still are going with this thing, and they bring Garth Brooks on to host, and then confusingly, a guy who is not Garth Brooks, but is, to be the musical guest. I watched that. I did not see the special, but I 100% watched the entire episode. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I didn't see that when it was on. It got re-aired. It was like Comedy Central used to re-air oh SNL. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. when I saw it. Yeah, I might. I, I probably that's where I that's where I saw it mm-hmm. too. And uh, it was it was so goddamn confusing. But it did honestly feature a couple of very funny sketches. Actually, yeah. Garth Brooks is a goddamn entertainer, and he's pretty oh, that's funny. got that. Uh, I uh, and I had to be reminded of it. It has the. Uh, the devil selling your soul to the devil. Will to Ferrell as Lucifer. As the de- and he, he's like, I just want to write one great country song. And then like the devil, I'd sell my soul. And the devil shows like, you'd sell your soul. And then like the devil like sucks. sells out a guitar and sucks. There's a guy named Fred and he's got a pair of slacks. Ooh, Fred's got slacks. Ooh, Fred's got slacks on the boulevard. Hold on a second. I think it's out of tune. Man, I mean, I don't want to miff you, but I, that sucked. I said the guitar was out of tune. Sorry. It wasn't my fault. Okay, okay. Fred Slacks is a winner. Like, it was, it's so funny. And it's it's Will, Will Ferrell, Ferrell being Will Ferrell. Being, yeah, just being Will Ferrell at Garth Brooks as hard as he can, dressed as the devil. It's very funny. And he's funny. just getting frustrated. Like, Damn it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's so fun. Uh, it also features the, uh, the cowboy sketch uh, mm-hmm. where there's a bunch of uh, hardened uh, real-life cowboys sitting around a campfire, and it goes one by one, and they all tell these awful tales of, like, you know, horror and heartbreak upon the trail, and then it gets to Garth Brooks in his full-on Garth Brooks stage regalia which includes his shirt that looks like the fucking windows 95 logo <laughs> <laughs> and he's got that wireless britney spears mic that comes around the head and it's like, the bobby brown mic the bobby brown mic and uh, well she covered my prerogative i can yeah. call it the britney spears mic it's true but uh uh but like yeah. the alliteration of madonna microphone there we go but and then it cuts to garth brooks after ha- hearing all these awful cowboy stories and he just goes like He's like, well, sometimes the zip line doesn't work on my uh, going from the top of the stadium to the stage, and that's that's really hurt my career. Sometimes you can make an alter ego and <laughs> kind of make a movie about it. And- yeah, but the SNL episode, the the little clip I'm going to play, it ends on the the weirdest like dour note. They have this sketch that they did a lot of times. That basically the biggest joke of the sketch involves Tracy Morgan saying to Lauren Michaels, "Bitch, get me a soda." And they did this a bunch. And then Lauren goes, oh, okay. And then he goes off stage and does it. So it's one of those sketches. But the whole sketch is essentially Tracy Morgan just shitting on the idea of Chris Gaines (laughs) for two minutes straight to Garth Brooks' face. And it's fucking hilarious. But then they don't end it on a joke. It's just weird. I'm telling you, if I was your role manager, man, I'd drop Chris Gaines like a hot plate, man. This is SNL the 25th year. I mean, you should have been with Barry White. You should have hired him, kid. You get into a fight, Barry White going to back you up. <laughs> Chris Gaines, the first time he see a knife, he going to skate on you. He's not going to skate on me, man. A man, he's soft, man. He's dude not going to skate on me, man. Fat. He calls Chris Gaines fat. He's fat. You can see the gut through that outfit, man. If you were that big, they'd be calling you Girth Brooks. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got this soup can with you tonight, man. You should have booked Willie Nelson. Hold on, hold on. You like Willie Nelson? He smoked weed, right? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. Chris Gaines ain't live, man. His insides are pink. Here's your soda. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Garth, they need you on stage. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, God. <laughs> Chrissy, I hate to tell you this. I know, I know. Garth is Chris Gaines. You really think I'm stupid, don't you? you I mean, did you hear the album? No. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy, man. I just can't believe he did that album. These are strange times, Holmes. Lauren, you you don't have to do that. 
What a weird ending. Did you hear the album? No. And then it's over. Maybe it just didn't work with the audience or something. I, well, Maybe they thought everybody would be rolling because so Because Lauren much. Michaels doesn't watch any of the, listen to any of the musical acts that he brings on. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't watch any of the projects that they're plugging. He's just like, they're having draconian control over stuff. Yeah. He's, but, a, he's just a, 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 an iron fist. That's essentially what he is. Lauren Michaels isn't the one that ends with it. Like, he's not the guy with the punchline usually. Yeah. He's totally the straight man in this situation. And I think it just got awkward because he's just sort of like being honest. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah, oh, no, exactly. So now we've arrived. Like I mentioned, uh, you know, after the disappointing sales, this is the they, main event. They, they went ahead. <laughs> they went ahead with two very confusing things one of those confusing oh, things man. was uh was of course the snl episode which we just discussed the other one this aired on november 24th 1999 this is the night before thanksgiving <laughs> viewers of vh1 were treated to a one-hour chris Gaines tv movie that was cleverly disguised as an episode of behind the music right down to the classic behind the music narration by jim forbes and the special lays out the kayfabe story of chris Gaines. And it is a staggering exercise in masturbatory pomp. But it's not behind the music. It's behind the life. Behind the life. So it distances it from the kind of general oeuvre of behind the music. So Chris Gaines technically not part of the behind the music oeuvre. It, it does two things. It, it One, I remember when I when I saw it, it, it t shows you how formulaic uh, behind the music yes, was. Yes, yes, and yes. He has a scheming, awful manager whose name is uh, Roma Style. Oh, yeah. And she was like unrepentant about it. She was like... He just needs to read the contracts he signed. Or something She's like the that. worst actress yeah, it's, ever. It's, I it's, worked so hard to make him what he is today. If it wasn't for me, he'd be yeah. nothing. And yes, we were having sex. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and that was that was the thing I remember the most about how it like kind of like cherry picked from like other other behind the music kind of stories. And you're just like, but it's so lame in their like the execution of it it's like the the him being addicted to women oh they, yeah yeah they never went past the ideas like just loved women oh oh, like, oh, oh women oh I want women to, uh, you're like what else what else that's from how was he oh. addicted? you can you could pick out w which one's from what because the uh the, the car crash is death leopard no the car crash the part be where john lennon gets shot as the beatles <laughs> <laughs> well the, the car crash is either def leopard or um or um motley crew but i think it's more of a def leopard one yeah. because oh, he yeah, injures himself Steel, yeah or uh, you lose or a leaf leg Garrett, or leaf yeah, yeah there is yeah. that uh there's the manager thing is from the billy joel one the plane crash is from skinner the yeah. plane yeah the plane and, crash uh, and big, Ray Vaughan. big or, bopper yeah yeah, big, yeah. 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 The, pick your fucking one uh yeah and then um or uh jim Croce too. Yeah, there's a bunch um, of those. But there's also the thing of the the sex one. That's from the Ted Nugent one. Yeah, that's so right. they pick from all where he's just like, hey, I was just a wang dang addict. <laughs> <laughs> but they, didn't they do a thing where like the 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 guy in the group that was his best friend that died? Yeah, there's like a whole thing with like a ring or something. Oh where, yeah, like he's oh, wears yeah. the ring. Yes. Yeah, it's so we're, that's we're, from the Red Hot Chili Peppers one where, where Halal Slovak dies. Oh, so and they I, wear a yeah. ring like they's Frodo. Well, or no, one not of them? the ring part, but the thing of the person that dies from the band, and it's like yeah. the Brotherhood yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. So it's I, like they're soldiering I, on, even. Yeah. Though, yeah. So but. I, I just wanted to uh, shout out uh, uh, a hero, somebody on uh, on YouTube. Uh, whose YouTube name is Goth Brooks uh, has <laughs> awesome. Goth Brooks. Goth, Goth Brooks. Brooks. That's kind of what Chris Gaines was. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Well, his avatar is Chris Gaines. Uh, <laughs> this person has put up the entire forty-three minutes of the one-hour uh, Chris Gaines special with with commercials. Obviously, it's one hour, but forty-three minutes long, and it is available on YouTube. And if you want to watch it, uh, we'll put it up on our Twitter at the Goods Pod. I got timestamps, guys. We can hit you this do? fucker oh, right. beat by beat. Oh, uh, man. So I just want to start off with some the, the highlights of the film uh, uh, at the beginning. The film. <laughs> at, the, at the beginning. <laughs> the film. <laughs> is this a director's cut? <laughs> it is. This is a commentary now. It's a film much in the way in which the Zapruder film <laughs> is a film. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris Gaines is born in Brisbane, Australia. To, uh, oh, yeah. I forgot to, about that. So to, no accent. None oh, yeah. at all. To two <laughs> Olympic swimmers. Do you know what that is? That is stolen from Fleetwood Mac. 
because Lindsey Buckingham was like his his brothers were like all out athletes, and he was like, I think I'm done with athletics. And I'm there was a, a behind fan. the music Fleetwood Mac. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you said he was born two Olympic swimmers. I thought that was his address or something. <laughs> yeah. No, no, his, <laughs> his Olympic swimmers Boulevard. His his uh his parents are both Olympic gold medal swimmers. Uh, and his father was this Lars. His father always wanted him to be a swimmer, so he is uh, a consummate disappointment to his father, uh, which is also recurring uh, yeah. behind the music uh, theme. Uh, he moved to Inglewood, California, at the age of five, and yet somehow has a southern accent. <laughs> So then the film goes on to talk about uh, his uh, teen band that he's in uh, with Crush. his with his best friend. And the name of that band is Crush, which and the greatest hits uh, actually features. Uh, oh, it's their first single or whatever. Is yeah. The, yeah, it has one Crush song. Uh, and that song is it's called the last one. I think it's the last if song. You tell me so. And that song is called My Love Tells oh, Me So. Yeah. yeah. So let's uh, let's hear a little bit of that as we continue talking about Crush. OK, so I just I just want to point out just the shags. It, I kind of like this. This is the best song of the bunch, I think. It it kind of sounds like the uh, That Thing You Do soundtrack where everyone's trying to do the 60s. It's very, like, Beatles-ish. Yeah. Yeah, wh what year was... Is this supposed to be so, 1989. Yeah, this is supposed to be 89, and they but they loved Lennon and McCartney, and they considered themselves they wanted to be Lennon and McCartney. Which so. what I mean, we don't have it, but um, the the liner notes for this album are hilarious because there's fake stories for every one of these songs. Yeah, that's right. It's crazy. Also, okay, yeah. Yeah. here's a couple. Is this a Ruddle song? <laughs> here's a couple of points that I want to make. I want to be a hairdresser. Two hairdressers. <laughs> Rivers glosses over the fact that the first 30 seconds of Behind the Life of Chris Gaines is the biggest like train wreck of all time. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's essentially where they, they just hit all these points and they're just like, his addiction, sex. Oh, oh <laughs> listen, we can we can just play yeah, yeah. we can just play the fucker. And they mind you, they also found all it's a mixture of Garth Brooks footage because the G can be also Gaines, the Garth Gaines thing, right? So it's a lot of concert footage of Garth yep. Brooks. Uh, but it's a lot of stock footage. Yeah. And there's a lot of stock footage of like, it's, it's like to point out the fact that he was, you know, had it was addicted to women. I think they just went into the stock footage machine, like where the catalog was, and they just typed in like concert and sluts. And that's like yeah. all they did. <laughs> Like well, a Boolean search for that. It was just like, <laughs> all right, you know. I think you can make a images. documentary about anything if you have enough stock footage. Yeah, yeah. they had their big This is like Atomic Cafe. It's they like, had their big beats <laughs> that they clearly did photo shoots for. Yeah. Like their, yeah. the, the eras in time. Right, right. And then they, Featuring and they had the, the actor from Seven Years in Tibet. Yeah, yeah. They, had the, they had the episode clips, like the video interview clips, and then they filled it in with like these generic stock footage like shots in the, like there's there's footage for the plane crash where it just shows this like little tiny community meter plane that just takes off and you're just yep. like yeah okay that probably cost you four hundred dollars or there was the, the there was the <laughs> one that it was like the record the the release of the record just to show it was being released in record stores it was the clip that they always used on mtv news to talk about things being released in record yep. stores yeah so it's a like they use like Somebody recycled through the record yeah the and CDs. a guy like listening to the listening station yeah, the sampling yeah. station doing the little air drum on there they always use that one this is like a compendium yeah. of, of stock footage and the ones with the women and they recycle it so there's like yeah. This one of like a woman just like with big fake boobs at a concert just lifting up her bikini top and showing them off and it's like blurred like the nipples are blurred. <laughs> they showed this clip four friggin' times yeah. in this thing. It's well, they want to like, make sure people watch they it. They recycle it. Just, I like the yeah. generic characters that were in the thing where it was this sort of like engineer. Like it was like a guy who was like supposedly the engineer. Ryan that, Duffy. Yeah, or the uh, <laughs> yeah. or there was like former executive where it's just this like buttoned up like fatherly looking guy. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, he did great business for us, but I just didn't see ourselves. <laughs> or the, or like, the, Shut up. The like, former girlfriend that's just like... Well, like one time he asked me and my sister. Oh, if and we she's wanted got the Sarah Huckabee eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. the uh, he wanted to do it with me and my, my sister. sister but and I was like, no. I was like, no, that's gross. But my sister was like, let's get let's on. Yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah. just like, oh god. So, and it's just like, and her character is always just like they take it one step too far with the too much information. Where it's just like, he was such a good lover. I mean. Just like such a good lover and so sensitive. And he had like really large balls. 
balls. Like it would just be like one step, like <laughs> unnecessary. I, I feel bad for like that girl, like just people in this that are scattered through as actual characters, like the mom and then that current girlfriend. It yeah. towards the end, end of it. I reached out to her. I did not did hear you? anything back. I found the current girlfriend did on you? Facebook That's and I awesome. sent her a fucking message and I didn't hear back. If I do, I'll keep you updated here on the show. <laughs> oh, no, but I like. I I just kind of wonder. Like it's um, it kind of falls in line with like certain other thing where like, do you even put that on your resume? Is yeah. that something that you even want to like? Did she just cash that paycheck? I don't want anyone to know that I was yeah. a Chris Gaines groupie. Yeah. So uh, I got SAG after all for that. <laughs> <laughs> I got Taff Heart lead. So are those venereal diseases? Uh, <laughs> so the uh, the the kayfabe storyline for Crush. Uh, first of all, he's obsessed with giving the middle finger. Uh, yeah. They had to reprint. This is one of the stories. They had to reprint a bunch of Crush's first album because Chris Gaines has his hand in his waistband, but he's just got the middle finger sticking. But out. it's, it's, like, made it's him a wear mystery. Mittens. And then later in the show, they show him flicking off the Hollywood sign. Yeah, but <laughs> so it's like he's obsessed with giving the middle finger. But and his <laughs> co-creator, uh, by the way, uh, his name is uh, Tommy Levitz. He's a 19 year old musician and a hotshot pilot uh, dies in the plane crash and that is the turning point of the first act of okay the film. here's a couple of points from this yeah. first off the thing is is that they posit the fact of him flipping off the can the, the like showing the bird on the album cover as being like this big mystery and that former one of the former girlfriends one of the short hair is just like everybody was wondering is was he really flipping off the camera and then it cuts to him as chris gaines he's just like i did it because i was just like I did it to, against the system. Yeah, he goes. Yeah. I think he goes. I think I was flipping off the system. Yeah, that was it. The second thing was was that every character in this, right? Tommy Levitt is sixteen years old. Yeah. Right. He's a singer songwriter, <laughs> and, and he's a, a and a pilot. It's just like no. In real life, rock stars are freaking just when they're growing up, they're losers, yeah, man. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Well, Eddie Van Halen spent his entirety of high school in his bedroom. Either playing guitar or jerking off. Yeah. And that's why and he that's has a, a fifty word vocabulary. And that's <laughs> that's it. Like everybody that has been on behind the music is like, I was just a dude, a dirt bag, I just was a regular ass guy. In this, they just ramp it up to like amazing proportions where it's like, he was the the son of two Olympic swimmers, and Tommy Levitt was a pilot, and he could do anything yeah. that he wanted to. And I also like the fact that Billy Joel in this insinuates that they were gay together. Yeah, Billy Joel is actually in this for real. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to play this clip because this is uh, this is following the death of, of Tommy Levitt. Uh, this this is in uh, this is Chris Gaines uh, in uh, Behind the Light. There was no music without Tommy. Tommy was the music. So there was not going to be a replacement for Tommy. Crush was dead. <laughs> this is like a bad wrestling. Chris Gaines. Promo. <laughs> that's uh also, now so the, that, the other thing was with the billy joel thing is like he billy joel it has to just deliver a line he was just like yeah they had this like brother thing like to show that they were friends but the way in which he delivered it is he's just like yeah they had this like brother thing and it just came off in that like billy joel is insinuating that they were a couple yeah. which is especially jarring given the fact that how much they kind of emphasize how, how many women that Chris Gaines is all about. He's just like, yeah, I'm just like, just having sex all the time with babes. Maybe he's overcompensating. They always talk about babes. Oh, I'm actually, like I'm so many, ba you could do a master cut of this and you could have like three minutes of them just saying, Beautiful babes, gorgeous babes. He's oh, addicted babes. to women. Oh, addicted yeah. to sex. Oh, I've, I've, babes. Got, I've got, I've got one of the. Well, but, I've got the babe clip right here. Let's just uh, hear it real everybody quick. Everybody earns a little bit of their reputation. He had babes at home, on the road, <laughs> on the bus, on tour, off tour, in the studio, out of the studio, in a session, out of session, in clubs, in bars. I mean, I couldn't keep track of it. So, wow. They talk about babes like the real behind the music. So like cocaine was everywhere. Yeah, I know. In it's the just, stock footage. I don't yeah, and, like, he's, and he's and he's just like, like he talks about moving to California and he moves to California when he's young. He's like fought. Right. And he's just yeah. like, there was two things about it. Beautiful weather. Gorgeous babes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I think True. overall, like, first of all, his acting in this is terrible. Oh, <laughs> dude, he has the, this pouty face, and That's, he keeps... It doesn't move. Like, he, he's just really, like, uh, it's so dour. It's so, yeah. like, everything he's just, like, he was dead. 
Chris Gaines was dead. Like, and the, like it, everyone's. Dead. I think he was like doing like <laughs> any acting dead. coach would be like cut that shit. And out. the bassist, <laughs> yo, there's a bassist. The bassist they have in the band crushed. Biggest dork ever. Like he's oh, just like yeah. a he's just well, like a tall, uh, yeah. lanky guy with like kind of wavy hair, and he wears like glasses. He and he looks like somebody from the AV Squad. Like he was on in the AV Club, and they have this fake interview thing. Like aren't an there MTV two different news? versions of the bass player? Like there's the kid version, and then they yeah. interview him later, and he's just. I mean, he didn't like, die. In the plane Sad crash, sad forty year old. Yeah, yeah. No, he looks like Mark just, McGuire. Yeah. Just Tommy. Tommy's the only one that died in the plane crash. Okay, so Tommy was a pilot while he was in high school. Yeah, he yes. was a 19, 19 year old rock star pilot. Yeah, and okay. Yeah. Fly, uh, and he's <laughs> dumb enough fly to think that. He, and he's dumb enough that he can fly a Cessna six from Palmdale to freaking Dallas. You can't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He was trying to go. Well, to maybe Dallas that's why he died. Palmdale. He ran out of gas halfway. <laughs> you can't do that. But there was like the thing where the the base is just to show how like vapid he was they were like yeah we're in it for like the rock music and the babes and the music and the babes and the yeah. beautiful babes and then the guy that's the bassist who's like a total dork is just like yo man we're in it for the money yeah and yeah. then everybody's getting real awkward and he's just like yo check out these pants i just bought <laughs> look at these pants <laughs> and then you just see chris gaines like young chris gaines in the back just like brooding just like yeah i'm so over this no no when it comes down to it, it's like we're kind of giving like <laughs> Garth your Brooks a bunch of shit about this and everything like, <laughs> yeah, yeah just the idea there's so many people who signed on to it. Like someone had oh, to produce. Yeah. That Don episode. was. Don had was. To yeah. He's in <laughs> like, the fucker. Well, yeah. like, Don was is all over this whole, movie. There was a whole special on NBC. There was a whole performance. VH1 special. Like, yeah. People in Studio 8H in New York City, they watched him put on a wig <laughs> and wear all black and be this and like soul patch. He spirit gummed yeah. a soul patch. Soul patch to his By the way, that part that we just showed, no soul patch. Yeah, no. Next it clip. Keeps, it keeps flipping back and patch. forth. Yeah. They don't shut up in that thing too about how much like he's like I just didn't like my face. There like, is no lot. script there's supervisor whole, for the soul patch. Well, and there's a, there's an <laughs> album. There's one of the albums that these greatest hits are coming from yeah. is an album. And I think they mentioned it in the behind the music is uh he he refused to have any publicity photos. Yeah, apostle. that was that is was it apostle. apostle? Yeah. which just looks like the cover <laughs> of a Creed album. Yes, that's all it looks like. Oh, this and ring. and uh, and by the way, just fun fact: you brought up the specter of Scott Stapp. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what was the biggest selling debut album of was the, it week, that the week that Chris Gaines came out? Fucking Human Clay by Creed. Oh. Yeah, that was the number one new album of that time. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to mention real quickly. You know how they they always do this in the in the behind the music's where they'll go coming up. A blah, you know, and then they'll yeah. have the story, and then they'll just cut to a quick interview where somebody goes, "Oh yeah, well, you know, we knew he'd lost it." When behind the music continues, they do that, but they the clips they show never come back into the thing, and they never get paid off. And uh, <laughs> there's two of them I wanted to play. One of them is uh, where he's talking about being a sex addict, uh, and it's just a uh, uh, this hanger on guy uh, Duffy talking about uh, that. And then I want to play one more from Duffy. You know how some people go into an ice cream shop and they like vanilla ice cream, and then another guy goes in and he has to try all. 32 flavors. 31. Well, Chris is a 32 flavor kind of guy. 31. When behind the life of Chris Gaines. Chris gets an extra flavor from <laughs> yeah, <himself. exactly. laughs> So that's disgusting. But then there's this other one at the very beginning that they never pay off that is the weirdest thing in the whole movie, I think. Tours were renowned for their outrageous antics. Yeah, this I remember going over to Chris's house. He was packing and he was packing a chainsaw on his back. There was a chainsaw on tour, yes. There was. <laughs> what the maybe, fuck does that mean? Maybe what he was, was opening for Jack. Two things about two things about that. That shows the lack of uh, imagination the writers of that chainsaw. script for this thing are well, have. No, it's the lack of Garth not wanting to fuck with his conservative audience. No, absolutely. It's so PG thirty. He's like, there's we can't a have, chainsaw. We can't have heroin. To do what? Yeah, we can't. It's What's like, crazier than heroin and booze? A chainsaw. A fucking chainsaw. Well, well there's, there's no heroin, and he also gives a very PG way of describing his sex addiction yeah. too. Well, yeah, but yeah well, he's probably doing a jackal that song. That's why <laughs> too. If you kind of listen to the way he replies to that, like, yeah, there's a chainsaw on tour. So Michael Jackson, it is so like. Hey, I don't even know where the elephant man bones are. Like a certain thing. Like, <laughs> it is very Michael Jackson. Yeah. But there's a thing about it, right, where he's he's um the with the chainsaw, it's like vanilla fudge and Led Zeppelin had a mud shark. So it's like if you just yeah. say they had a mud shark, you don't know the story yeah, behind it. Oh, the red snapper. So there could yeah, be yeah. a thing with like the the chainsaw, but then he he also talks about it in the sense where he's just like, Yeah, there was a chainsaw. Like it is a thing where there was a 
a dangling edge where yeah. was he doing a jackal cover right yeah was he was there something but like given how ridiculous the story well, does is he say he carried it on his back been, there could have been a murder yeah that's there what could, i could have murdered somebody I think yeah. it's yeah. like sort of insinuating that chris Gaines. this is fucking he's he's chris wayne Gaines. he's yeah, a yeah. Well, killer or even the yeah, idea of like oh they're on tour there's a chainsaw in the bag like do you know how you always hear the stories about like Oh yeah, they just destroyed the hotel room. Like he g- went out on tour. Literally, and I'm gonna it. take yeah. a chainsaw and destroy shit. <laughs> I that to... being said, oh, yeah. there's a song on the album called the, the Right Now song, which is like it steals that whole chorus. Yes, from, but, from the Young Bloods, everybody yeah, the, get together. But here's the thing that's crazy about it: it has all of the like tone of a protest song. So he's like kind of rapping the the verses. Maybe yeah. but it's the, the there's no Maybe it's the Protestants. Yeah, let, let's hear, let's the, hear a little bit just so you know people know yeah. what we're talking about. This is the main thing I remember actually from Chris Gaines because this had a video. Yeah, this was a lot this of airplay. Second second we can dance single. if we want to. We can we leave, leave your friends, friends behind. behind. Gonna act real rude and totally remote. Almost sounds like rockabye when you hear it now. Yeah. Or numb. Yeah. yeah. By you too. Maybe it's the crack. Maybe it's the Bible. be the lack? Come on. Yeah. So he's he stole that mel- mel- uh, melody yeah, from. Uh, well, he stole that the the verse or I mean the chorus right, from the from the Young Bloods. The verse of those songs, like it's like it sounds like it's a protest song. It sounds there like it's edgy. He nothing takes no controversial. Stand. Yeah. He takes no stand at all. It yeah. sounds like it's about something, and he even talks about religious fighting between Catholics and Protestants, like it's a 15th century Swiss canton or something. <laughs> well, like he's he's like maybe it's the mothers. It's like it's like maybe it's the gangs. All these things where you're like maybe it's the crack. Maybe. Well, it's and he's like. All he ends up on is like, come on, guys, let's love each other. Like, yeah. there's no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I wanted to play this because <laughs> this this is one of my favorite just tonal things is how serious he is about his music, but then how ridiculous his album titles are. So uh, this is this is also from Behind the Life. Chris says the setbacks made him more committed than ever to making a name for himself. You are forever competing with the future. So make your mark as strong as it can be. <laughs> which makes it harder to wipe away. In early 1991, Chris went back away. into the studio with producer Don Was to record a new effort he called Fornicopia. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not even kidding. I so, want that as like an actual fake album cover oh, on my wall. And we'll we'll so put this funny. on our Twitter. The cover for Fornicopia is him dressed as Alex from Clockwork Orange over a pair of boobs. Yeah. <laughs> and, but the lead up to it is like, it's, it's time that I got serious to make an album, make a name, and prove myself. And then it's like, what was the album called? Sexy Party Time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and even Fornicopia is one of those things where like it's just that pun. That, uh, like it was so probably like stupid. we call it Pornocopia, and they're like, I don't know. It's That's a Spinal a Tap album. Fornicopia. I was going to say this is almost like he's doing his own Spinal Tap, but he doesn't yeah. realize he's so unself aware that he doesn't realize. Well, that maybe he is... sold it that way. Like it's yeah. going to be like this meets Spinal Tap, and everybody was on board until he put on the wig, and everybody realized he couldn't act worth a lick. But yeah, yeah. The, the, and he might be crazy. The 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 thing that's crazy about it is that he kind of has this his his. Ver- Verbal intonation is very much like that phase of Steven Seagal when he pretended he was Native American. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's that sort of like, I'm deep, I'm Native American. That sort of voice that people that aren't Native American, like, project onto Native American characters. Uh, the second one uh, is that he has one song on Fornicopia. They just play a little clip of it. And the, the, the line that just stuck out to me was, fine wine, fine cuisine. And that was <laughs> oh, like, that's... um. <laughs> That is uh, digging for gold. Oh, oh, sh- oh, well, we should hear a little bit of digging this for is gold. The, this is, is that the, about picking um, your nose? This is the Fleetwood Mac <laughs> ripoff. It's got like a chain feel to it. Like, God damn it, it just is the chain. Yeah. It's about this. It's a, it's a gold it's digger. A it's a, like the guy's money goes away and she they fucking bails on it. now. They never love on me. a fantasy up out on the well, that's a Lindsay Buckingham riff right there. That's oh my god. Yeah, it is a Lindsay Buckingham riff. Yeah, the minute I heard that, like, um, there's also Main Street on the album is totally like a Neil Youngish, uh, Bruce Springsteen sort of like, like oh well, we or a Heartland rock. We gotta so, hear this. Let's see, we gotta yeah. hear Main Street then. 
Oh god, it's yeah. A, yeah, it sounds like fucking like they went in. Sounds like the wallflowers. Like, Let's cover these demographics like flat out. <laughs> this is I think this is one of the songs he played on uh SNL. One light blinking. He's got all the bases no. covered yeah, on this. Yeah, it's really Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. <laughs> yeah, it's, I guarantee you, this is C D or a G D and C. Like if you it's just like I'm knocking on no, you know what this door. is? It's one Holy four five shit. words. This is fucking. Uh, this is a uh, coding by Jason Isbell. This is. One of my friends is taking her in and giving her coding. Holy shit! He this is fucking a, well, this, this is, from this Gar- is one four Gar- five chords. That's all it is. Oh yeah. my god! Wow. Um, let me see I this find. is good. I like how I like how Jim actually figured out the entire like what oh, song yeah. I was referencing by just saying well, no, fine wine. Fine no, you know what it is? It's because it's like the bridge of that song. Because the minute it said fine wine, fine cuisine, I was like, oh, that's that whole thing about like. Uh, cause it's like <laughs> the digging for gold thing is just a story about like this really hot girl that could be his daughter. Uh, they marries her. She's like, we love each other. And then all his money goes away and she fucking bails on him so yeah. fast. Like, yeah, I was, uh, that's I was, how that shit works. I was hoping digging for gold was a, was a foreigner <laughs> pastiche. Digging for gold. So we, uh, we started referencing this earlier and, and this is the element of the story that I guess Goodnight's not familiar with, which is why I couldn't wait to get to it. The way he explains the fact that he had to do a younger version of himself. And obviously he, he couldn't find anybody that looked like him. So he hired a really sexy guy. And the way he explained the change, this, this, this happened to him. And keep in mind, Garth Brooks wrote this. And how badass does this sound? Just after dawn on February 16th, 1992, Chris left the studio heading for his home in Malibu. This is so funny. His red Corvette sped along a remote stretch of Malibu Canyon Road with the radio blasting. I had it so loud, and I was going so fast. <laughs> I imagine, I imagine... Wait, 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 wait. Despite the brisk morning air, Chris fell asleep going into a corner at 90 miles per hour. Ow! He says he woke up as his car soared off a cliff. How long was the next thing I remember is coming to in that second when you know you've passed the line. One minute there's asphalt, one minute you're flying through the air. <laughs> like evil can evil. <laughs> Chris's car flipped end over end and finally rolled to a stop more than 200 feet down a ravine. 200 Dazed feet. and bleeding, Chris somehow had the strength to dial 911. Officer Barry Sanders was first. Barry Sanders. Yeah, the dispatch told me that someone inside that wreck made the call on a cell phone. We should phone find this and guy. And I had to go down and see for myself because no one could have survived that wreck. So, okay. So in this scenario, <laughs> Chris so Sanders part of the is show. so badass that he crashes his car, flies 200 feet off a cliff. He fucking flips in over in and he's still able to call the cops. And then the cop commends how badass he is like well, he was is, wearing a seatbelt well, it's like danny hodge where he like <laughs> well it's all punches it's all the sales of the, the car and the swam to the shore of chris Gaines. <laughs> But, uh, he, no, so this is this is. It so sounds cool. like a guy in freshman creative writing where they're just like, you know, describe what your ideal death would be. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> well, first I was fighting Terminators, yeah, and then and I well, had a sixteen-inch dick. Yeah. And the, the only way it could have been more cliche is if he went off the cliff and landed in some millionaire's pool. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're actually uh, funny. You should mention Wait, but, but, the genital area, Pat, because he did injure his pelvis uh, in the plane cr- uh, in, 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 in the car in, in crash the car crash this in the so car funny. crash i have just my, my note here just says uh at 25 <laughs> minutes 35 seconds <laughs> the best, the best part, part. it is <laughs> his arms were broken his pelvis was smashed up doctors told him that his career was over everyone believed it but chris all the doctors told me i would have trouble walking in and definitely never play the guitar again i knew i would walk again but living my life without music, and this is embarrassing to say, but I was worried about living my life without sex. <laughs> <laughs> so he was worried about his broken dick more so than his music. Well, I, I, I don't know. What I'm they say you may never play the guitar again, but you can play the guitar with a busted pelvis. Well, he busted his shoulder, and I think and his, his pelvis, his hands, his and hand. his and his pelvis. So there's there's three things that kind of emerge from this. One. I just imagine they were like, 
he he got in his car to break it dawn and the radio was blasting. I was imagining that he was listening to like drive time morning zoo crew radio. <laughs> and, if, and if you guys need just to just cranking it up, if you need to like, imagine what he looks like while he's giving these little interview clips and stuff, he looks like a shitty Robert Smith. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's like, what I'm saying. It yeah, looks it, really weird. He's Robert Smith in a George Harrison wig. Well, just to line up with the um. Like I remember reading through the uh, the pamphlet of the album. Yeah, the liner like, notes. Yeah, the liner yeah. notes. Okay, when he was injured, the the fake story behind one of the songs on the album is called "Unsigned Letter." Yes, and it's this fake story where the the nurse that was helping him out, like when he was injured, was this homely looking woman, like this kind of like not a very attractive, yeah. not normally the type of woman someone like Chris yeah, Gaines yeah. would be fucking. Yeah. So he wrote an unsigned letter to her that was basically like, "Meet me in Boston," and it was this whole weird thing. What? It doesn't say. I don't remember it's if it so said whether weird. he actually went to meet her, but it's like, would she take this chance? Like, if you listen to it, it's totally like flat out in the song where it's like, yeah. would she take this chance to go and like go on this adventure because someone sent her an unsigned letter? I'm like, this is unsigned it's letter. It's fucking the sad because it's like, dude, you're gonna ruin this woman's life. She's just fucking rolling along. It's like, yeah, I can't. Well, I, up on guns, she buys like a first class ticket to Boston. Fun to pretend. Oh my god, you're right. It's this fucking <laughs> teen spirit. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, no, he catfished a lady. Yeah, catfished a lady basically before it was a thing. Secret someone, and she fell into the mystery. <laughs> oh, God. He kind of does look like mystery, though, he the pickup f- artist. He looks like mystery <laughs> and Chris Angel. Yeah, you're right. But so She fell into the mystery. So the thing was, is that first off, it's like I just imagined <sighs> him just like in his convertible Corvette. That he survived this crash in, yeah, right. But I'm just imagining him listening to like prank phone calls and like Kevin and Bean show, just yeah. like really like radio. He wasn't also, asleep for very long uh, too because he woke up to see himself going over the se- edge. Yeah. Second, second of all, right, you cannot physically go even in a Corvette. I don't think at any point on Malibu Canyon Road you can sustain 90 miles an hour. No, it's, it's a, impossible. It's a, it's they call it the fucking snake for a reason. I know it's it, nothing but hairpins. Yeah, and that's shit. also that story. I can. Please remember they had a Jan and Dean one and they jacked that from Jan and Dean. Oh, that's Dead the Man's music. Curve. Yeah. yeah. The third thing was is the way in which he talks about sex is very much like how a 13 year, bo- year old boy talks about sex and babes. Yeah. Like just it's yeah. just like, yeah. It's that 40 year old version of uh, virgin thing where he's right. like, it uh, feels like sand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Her breast felt like bags sand. of sand. <laughs> yeah. She's like, <laughs> uh, like, you know, you just have to deal with all this. This, you know, vagina that you have to, you know, manage because I am just having so many, so many sexes. Well, what, <laughs> what we yeah, I had, what I had a couple of blowjobs from this <laughs> yeah. girl. Yeah. We're going to have all of the sex. Yeah, all this. Well, at one point uh, and he I, says the sex addiction nearly killed him and they never pay that off. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is that sort of thing where well, it's Well, in like, the era of AIDS, it can nearly yeah, kill well, anyone. No, I mean, it's yes. like, but it's like that high school thing where it's like, those guys would always like when they discovered like you know like getting yourself off or something. It's just like how many they always think it's like is there a way in which you could like masturbate so many times that you die? Yeah. <laughs> like is, is there like is there like a dance car that you could like you know do it so many times that you die? That makes me think of and my that's health like, teacher <laughs> where he was like if you do it too much it starts to hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the extent. But yeah, it's it's it's, it's kind of one of those things where he's just like I could have like had sex so many times that I could die. It, 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 it seems like he wants to talk about sex, but he, for his audience, he doesn't want to be at all graphic. Yeah, exactly. So, or it right. doesn't go into any sort of like taboo realm. So like when they were listening, like he's just into girls. One time I showed up, it was like two girls, or three, three girls, girls, or four, girl. four like, girls. Like adding numbers to the number of girls doesn't make it like more well, yeah. crazy. And, 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 uh, to this point, by the way, as far as the car crash goes, when they talk about the exposition, like what led into it, Vince Neal's car crash, obviously it's because he was fucking drunk. Yeah. yeah. Same with Leaf Garrett, same with all the cars. He's tired. He was working on his record so hard that he fell asleep on the way home. Yeah, their version of badass is he may have possibly debatably given the finger on an album cover. Right, so while it does, it flirts with the beats of behind the music, it never actually breaches over into anything really that objectionable. I'm surprised it doesn't go into that realm of like, how did he beat his sex addiction? Diction, and then it was like the Lord, and you're like, oh shit, yeah. yeah. Well, he the like, record is called Apostle, and yeah. oh, and the thing uh, I I started saying this and just totally forgot to to say to to pay it off uh, is the other thing that happened in the car crash. His face 
was horribly disfigured. Yes. Okay, yeah, you, y'all are saying this. So his face is supposed to be so disfigured that he looks exactly like Garth Brooks. Right. Wig. So what he's saying is the, the kid who played Brad Pitt in Seven Years in Tibet, who has been Chris Gaines up until this point in the film, is now replaced by Garth Brooks. So he's saying weirdly about his own face that his face is like what would happen if a sexy guy smashed his face into the side of a cliff and then they fixed it as much as they could. Does he have some kind of issue with Isn't his it face? Isn't it a weird realm of started? like, look how humble I am. I'll have a car accident face. And you're yeah. like, what? Uh, yeah. You're not a bad looking dude. Why don't I, you yeah. calm down? I can't decide if it's just the easiest way to cover the transition between the two actors or if there's like a deeper yeah. psychological like element to it where there's, he just hates himself. Well, there's that joke. He, d- he tells that face. joke in or the special where he's like, oh, my brother saw the actor that was supposed to play young me and then it was like, oh, it must have been some, some car, accident. car accident. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like he just kind of thinks that's a, a like... I can I can look pretty humble. Yeah, I can look pretty humble by but saying this. Also, it's without saying that uh, if we're talking about people looking rough, Billy Joel in this looks rough. This is that phase where he kind of looks like a really like decrepit Tom Jones, <laughs> like yeah. how Tom Jones looks now, like just without the tan and without the good genetics. Billy Joel now, I know you ain't seen Star Wars, Pat, but if you ever see when the at the end of Return of the Jedi when Darth Vader takes his mask yeah, off, yeah, Billy yeah. Joel looks like that with a beard. <laughs> now. Uh, he looks like uh, what's his name from uh, Breaking Bad? Uh, Walter White? Walter no, White. no, Walter White. Um, uh, oh, Mike oh. Ehrman Trout. Yeah, 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 Jonathan, Jonathan Banks. Yeah, Banks. He kind of looks like him, but he looks like a he looks like if he had a drinking problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. There's like a thing where it's like a very sort of like teenage understanding of it's just like, dude, I'm going to get so famous that I'm going to like just like be with 10 women at one time. I'll just jump in a big yeah. heart shaped bed. And it's like that's kind of how Garth Brooks is on it because I didn't Garth Brooks like marry his high school sweetheart yeah and then divorced her uh the year after this album came yeah out. exactly yeah. so yeah. it's like this kind of weird warped thing of like he doesn't know his own sexuality so he's kind of stunted in this sort of thing where yeah he probably like i think he well, probably I mean, cheated on his fa- well wife maybe he's just like shy about talking about sex in public some people are like that but i think See, that the, but it's, he's, it's he's a character got, yeah. he's got brand in mind that's like, what i think that's very much i think it. that because not every, you know sex is the one thing pretty much that everybody does or as opposed to drugs alcohol any of the other beats of the classic behind the music tropes yeah. this is the one that would be the least offensive to his fan base yeah, that's not what i think he's Bruising. not biting probably heads would be the least offensive and stuff and even that well, no, even man that, and that's he could have explained, could have explained the damn bloat in his face if he no, was boozing that makes sense but if he did booze he might have had to construct a whole arc about right, that well, that would and, be yeah. too much and work. also he i mean think about you know there's a lot of uh like christian that's mundane with like boozing drink. when you could have like a teenage pilot who dies or something right. that is true yeah because there is that sort of, and that was around the time in which i'm um, sure he's got more with lots of mormon fans well no this I mean? is this is around the time in which um the 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 play Pledges, like the pledges, the high school pledges, the virginity pledges, and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah were big. Right. Like yeah, the the late ni- like the mid late nineties. That was like kind the of promise rings and shit. like Yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah. So I I guess that does make sense that it plays into something that was considered to be a big taboo and a big threat right. amongst probably. Well, you know, it, it might just be you know, sex is one of the tropes of behind the music. Yeah, that's and you've true. got a guy who's not a womanizer and be can't act yeah, pretending yeah. that he's a womanizer and that but, might be yeah. why it they comes off so they bad but they could have written something right but, but they did yeah there the ways in which they talk about it like the thing where it's like yeah he 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 asked to, to go to bed with me and my sister and i was like that's nasty oh, but I my sister good- was like i'm down uh, you know? <laughs> let's see i i actually have a good uh, a good pull quote from this this woman that you're talking about this is such a weird little comment if ever there was a human being that needed treatment for sex addiction it would be chris Gaines. <laughs> and i'm Wait. smiling but it's really not that funny of a situation with chris the whole world was his stage and that you know tended to cross over into the bedroom but i'm not as limber as i look <laughs> i'm not as limber it's as i look one beat 
<laughs> too much. <laughs> you're like, it's always one. What, like, like, what the fuck much. are you talking and about? It's a non sequitur. <laughs> yeah, total non sequitur. I'm not as limber as I look. Well, you know what it probably was? They probably had her do like a whole bunch of <laughs> things like that. And somebody was like, that's too funny. We have to keep that in. <laughs> oh, whether you know, it makes some sense. Or not. Yeah. Well, how, given how many times they repeat like stock footage things, maybe know, they, they could have used it elsewhere. They couldn't, no, maybe they, they, they didn't have enough time. Yeah, hour. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just like. A lot of these feel like real bad improv. Oh yeah. Whereas it's like just okay. Oh, the evil manager. Addict, that's what it all that, yeah. seems. The like. evil manager is the worst, dude. Style. Her last name is uh, Roma uh, Style. Roma Style. She's terrible. After the reconstruction, by the way, the next uh, the next beat of the movie is that he has to go away for a while and refine himself. Which is I what what. I'm trying to remember what behind the music that is where, you know, a band like will just go like, oh, we went into the mountains and made this fucking record. Oh, that's like, like half, of them. Half, half of them. Half of it's kind of like the Stones go to like a it chateau took in three France and a half to make years exile. to finish their next Or album, Blood Sugar so, yeah. Sex Magic that right. they're in. So his was he was he planned a two week road trip to Mississippi uh, and it then ended, ended, up, ended up staying for two months. And the quote in the film is that he had to, quote, bring back soul. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, and that's how he ends up with the. And that's like, how he yeah. ends up with the. Uh, there's two tracks uh, that are just back to back that are uh, uh, supposedly Prince like. Uh, so oh, the snow in July. Yeah, snow in yeah. July. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes it snows in. <laughs> sometimes it snows in April. This is this one's. Uh, this sounds like that uh, Steven Seagal reggae song we listened to in the Monica <laughs> Scott Celebrity <laughs> Albums episode. Well, this one and I think the other one is a trip to Noise. The other one, yeah. All she's, all he's missing is uh, what was her name, Lady, uh, Lady Soul or whatever. Yeah, the yeah. one going, you know. Steven Seagal, get the pun on me. Yeah, like, no. yeah. And then uh, this is drifting away. So this is what this is bringing the this is bringing back the soul from Mississippi. This song's really funny because it's like the basic crux of it is it's like I love you so much, but I don't trust myself to not be an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not as limber as he looks. Yeah, come on. <laughs> This is supposedly the song he wrote after spending two months in Mississippi. Yeah. It's like a hanging out in juke joints. With all of my heart, this is pretty damn country, I though. I will say like it, it's ballady, it's, but it's, it's like a, it, it's yeah, yeah, a little yeah. country. Yeah, it's got like a little bit of a Luther Vandross feel to it too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, so I just wanted to throw. It's not in that terrible. Out. I mean, it's not like no, it's awkward but or it, weird. It, it totally feels like pop by formula. Like yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's staggering. I mean, I just the whole can't... record seems it's like a formula oh, no, of like every yeah. genre. Well, and yeah. even if you look at most like country out like even his country albums like they're by formula too like there's got to be a certain number of ballads there's got to be a certain number of things yeah yeah he usually writes three maybe four of his own songs or is one of the writers on yeah yeah exactly songs. credited right yeah a couple of them are just kind of like there's there's definitely a, like a honky tonk sort of song yep, yeah there's got to be a, a rodeo stomp kind of like everybody yeah there's along. always yeah. and it's like it's all very calculated because it's like oddly enough like for as much as we you could be like i want to make the most original album ever People like certain things. There's a reason yeah. why, like they said, uh, Adele's albums. When you look at it, like musically, they're very structured. Right. On, like these are pleasant sounds people like to hear. Oh well, it's a like special, when when they do the yeah. thing where they'll put the two Nickelback songs on top of each other yeah. and the chorus hits at the exact same time. Oh yeah, the guitar that's so, solo hits at the exact yeah. same time. <laughs> there's yeah. that's one thing of it being like conventional. There's another thing where a lot of these songs come off as being like Casio keyboard presets. Yeah. Where yeah. he's just like so groove. Like a Jimmy Hart album. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. just, it's just baby yeah. face being like, you're giving me how much money? Sure. Sure. Whatever. Uh, before we leave the Behind the Life special, I just wanted to play this. All right, <laughs> This so, is longer than Chris Gaines' actual pretend life. Oh, I know. Yeah. Uh, but so it's so we, fun. So we set up at the beginning that there was going to be a film. And the film, we think, based on the stuff that's leaked out, was going to be about Chris Gaines dying and then someone trying to figure out what the fuck happened. The name of the movie was called The Lamb. The, the Lamb, Lamb yeah. which yeah. is weird. And by the way, I mentioned... Because Chris Gaines died for our sins. Do you not realize I kept this? thinking that, is too. Is he the sacrificial lamb? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's, that's what like, it's for. This is like a Christ narrative, essentially. It sounds like a religious movie. Well, no, yeah. at one point, uh, we heard it earlier in the episode, he says, you know, I stretched out my arms... 
he makes all these allusions to yeah. the lamb. And by the way, just as a little update of the lamb, 99 was when this whole thing obviously went to shit. And the guy who wrote the movie had to step away because he had a, a, an illness in the family and Garth took over writing duties. In 2002, Variety reported that he had picked up the reins again and had continued working on the lamb. But then it disappears into the fog of history. Never heard anything out after that from Jeb Stewart or the lamb. But they do make a caustic reference at the very end of this film that is, I think, is a reference to <laughs> him. <laughs> that I, I love that, how you keep calling this a film. <laughs> <laughs> that, this, that I, I think is... I hope you're saying this as an honorific because this is, <laughs> I would consider it film-like in its quality. Oh, yeah. But I think, <laughs> this, I think <laughs> this is supposed to set up the storyline for The Lamb. So uh, tell me if you don't think this is a bit of foreshadowing. I am one of those artists... That will never get old. I'll die before I get old. It's just written in the stars. You think I killed him, but I'm not it's as the Lam- manager. But it's not as Lambert as I look. He kills him. That's got to be what the if it's story. Like a, what if it's like a, a murder on the Orient Express who done it, where like he gets murdered and it turns out everyone fucking murdered him. Like <laughs> all five women <laughs> was having sex with him. Who who killed him? Let's let's just let's just say oh, he's he dead. Him. Hypothetically, probably Ryan Duffy, the engineer. <laughs> I was about to say, Duffy, it's Duffy. Ryan Duffy because Ryan Duffy. It's Duffy on the bus with the chainsaw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. it's the chainsaw. The chainsaw. The chainsaw has yeah. got to be a murder weapon. It's got to be the murder weapon. And Duffy. We just right? turned this into clues. I was going to say, and this is a whole record. It was an elaborate game Duffy, of clues. I know. Duffy, to throw in another behind the music classic. He's fucking Selena. No, he he's not Selena. Chris Gaines is the Millie Vanilli. The person that made the music the entire time. Is Duffy? Duffy. He is yeah, Duffy. Yeah, that Tim expression on his face <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> I know. Ryan he Duffy. knows. He knows. So you're saying he Duffy knows. is like the Sven Gali or the real double yeah, J the, behind he Chris is the Frank. He's the Frank Farian. He's the Martha Wash. He is like, you know, the basically, I think that Duffy did all the stuff. I like that. I actually think that the awful manager murders him like Selena. So tweet at us at the Goods Pod. We'll put up a poll. And uh, we'll come yeah, back. And we'll we put up a poll right about how a movie who, that never existed is the, is the, is is the end of this <laughs> Millie Vanilli. It is Chris Gaines a phony, or is Chris Gaines murdered by his manager? Maybe he's no. betrayed for thirty pieces of silver. <laughs> yeah, well, he's the lamb, baby. No, I mean it's the it's the thing, right? Where it's it's. It's like the usual suspects thing where verbal Kent is, is Kaiser Sose, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's the person that you kind of least. So it could be. Maybe Garth Brooks killed him. <laughs> what what yeah. if it was. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, yeah. What if it's one of those mind, like those oh. mind fucks in a movie where it's like, no, he God. actually died when his Corvette went over the yes. edge. Or the the 19 year old pilot was never dead, and he killed Chris Gaines. He kills Chris Gaines. Yeah, there is so this is a rabbit hole because because of the fact oh, that Chris God. Gaines stole a bunch of Tommy Levitt's music to make the Straight Jacket album, and Chris Gaines has to find other people to write his shit for him, i.e. Billy Joel, i.e. Don Was, i.e. Ryan Duffy. He basically has stolen all of his work. He's a plagiarist, right? Tommy is the lamb. Tommy Levitz is the lamb. Tommy is the lamb on the altar of Chris Gaines, and he fucking probably disconnected the fuel lines and had him killed. Yeah. Oh, that'd be a great scene in a movie where, like, but but Tommy Tommy plays a song for Chris, and Chris goes, "This is amazing." Tommy walks out of the room, and then he says to himself, "Chris goes." He's got to die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Tommy, and, and check this out. Check this out. Tommy Levitz, right? The plane crashes. Okay. Tommy Levitz is disfigured. He, in order to get revenge, gets lots of plastic surgery. Sure. Perhaps he has, a, he perhaps he has a sex change and he becomes the girlfriend that he meets. Maya Costa. Maya mean, Costa. He might become Maya Costa. Life? At the very end, Billy Joel's like, I fucking I knew it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. They, yeah. They had that brother thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And it's a, but it's a thing, right? Because Chris Gaines was off having sex with other people, right? He might not know what Maya Costa actually look. They never have had gotten uh, intimate because he's off doing all these other women. Right. So Tommy Levitt's in this kind of uh, uh, disguise decides, okay, I'm going to keep my distance and be cool with him 
being with other women so he doesn't pry and realize I'm really Tommy Levitz, right? And then the ring. The ring is the thing, right? It's all about that ring. Tommy takes the ring off of his finger and puts it back on his finger at the very end and like walks away like Kaiser Soze and just gets away with it. Yeah, yeah. Finkel is Einhorn. Finkel is Einhorn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, way back at the beginning, we said that Garth Brooks could have just made a regular pop crossover. <laughs> I know. That's yeah, yeah. like. Ain't like, y'all glad that he didn't, though? Yeah. You yeah. know what? In all reality, like. Didn't work out for him. It's working out great for us. Yeah. yeah. Well, and just the postscript, just so everybody knows. The cool. next year, by the way, Garth Brooks put out an album and then retired. Scarecrow, right? Scarecrow yeah. was the, supposed to be the last album, and then he did not make another record for, what, 13 years? Till all of his kids were off to college, I think. Yeah. So he effectively put out one more country record, fed some meat to the masses, and then walked out of the fucking yeah, studio. Well, you know what? In he re- stole all those songs from Ryan Duffy. He so. did. I remember when I first moved to L.A., maybe there was like wildfires in L.A. Uh, not in L.A., but like north of... Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. and that was an element we missed, by the way. His house burns down like Tom Petty in the in the. Oh, yeah, that's too. right. Sorry, and he's continue. like, I was on... Because of wildfires. But, I was on my roof uh, with, the, with the... Garth Garden Garden Brooks Garden Garden came Garden here and to the Staples Center. He did like eight shows at the Jesus. Staples Center in like... I think it was eight shows in like six days or something. He did like double shows certain days yeah and then like i went and saw him there at one like he was doing it as a benefit for the but that was like one of the few times he wasn't retired completely was retired. this like 2009 or 10 or something, something like that yeah it was like eight or nine. Big, yeah it was it? big it was like, it was a good concert it was when he came it out of just, retirement yeah, yeah but didn't play any chris Gaines stuff oh well, why, arguably well, why one not? of his new arguably <laughs> one of his new, uh, how funny would it have been just be like drifting away <laughs> play drifting away <laughs> Or he starts like, maybe it's the Catholics, maybe it's the Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if he comes around to, if he comes around in concert, I'm going and I'm making a sign. Yeah, and it's just gonna say maybe it's the Catholics. Maybe it's the <laughs> <laughs> if he comes around as Chris Gaines, I think we yeah. should all go. Or just have so, a sign that says "Snow in July." <laughs> well, I, I did look this up because I, I tried to find the most recent reference that was made about Chris Gaines to Garth Brooks' face, and it was during an interview. Somebody sent in a Twitter question that just simply said. Hey, when are we getting another Chris Gaines album? And Garth Brooks laughs a little bit and he says, Oh, I don't know. My ribs are just now healing from when they kicked the shit out of me the last time I did it. I would have yeah. just said, I don't know. I'll have to ax him. Yeah. <laughs> but think yeah. about who would give you... And then Tommy Levitz comes from behind and garrots his head. <laughs> think, think about who would give you a hard time for kind of doing something like that. Like, we're joking about... Like, yeah. No, but and like, I don't. A guy would... great. Well, no, but like yeah. a guy in a cowboy hat who like has to get tickets to a Garth Brooks show is going to be the guy who goes, what the hell is that shit? Like, those people are not forgiving in that way of like, ah, it was weird or different. You know what? Actually, uh, I take your point, but I would dispute it because the few clips that are like available of this on YouTube, I kind of went into the the Comments. comments a little bit people fucking like this. Yeah. I, I mean, people as have a, a fondness yeah. for it. Like some of the comments were like, you know, I thought it was a little weird, but I still have the CD. I play it all the time. Well, Garth and- Brooks was very over. We've talked right, about that. Yeah, and yeah. some people actually said this was my first Garth Brooks record, and I still love it. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. So, like, there it is, probably like, came out he, at the height of his popularity. No, I, that's what I said right at the beginning. He, he was yeah. selling. He had sold almost seventy million okay. records. So, when this if, thing came out. if 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 he kayfabed it even harder, and if that movie got made, right? If his egotism did not have him want to control everything. Yeah. Right. If they actually had the movie, the the lamb was made and it had good writers. We just wrote the plot for the lamb right My here. My God. Yeah. We, we solved it. And we, and it Garth would be is the secret heel. It was me. No, it, it was either, me, Tommy. It was me all along. Either it, it being Garth or being Tommy Levitz. Yeah, right. Yeah. If it was Tommy Levitz or the manager, there's yeah, a million. Yeah, suspects. Tommy, even Tommy Levitz, disguising himself as the girlfriend and creating that sort of like smoke screen where it's like, yo, you know, kind of being okay with him being with other women as a, a cover for that sort of thing. Yeah. That could have worked, but he didn't lean into it. He just yeah. like gave up. He just, if only listen to this show, where would he be right now? Yeah. What, uh, what if I he mean, finally, it, what if he, he hears this and finally like, he's like, I'm going to uh, head first right into it. Like, <laughs> I hope he does. Cause I want to see this. I movie. would love to see a 50, <laughs> I mean, late 50 year old be, Chris Gaines. I been, hope he just, uh, if you're less than Garth Brooks, please just put on a wig again and be Chris. Well, I mean, it, was, it would I, probably I should, be terrible, right? But it would be like campy and awesome. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I should yeah. I should shout out a couple of the tweets. We should get a band together and just go play this album. 
<laughs> I, we I, should become a tribute to Chris Gaines. Yeah, we could be the Chris, first Chris Gaines tribute band. No, we actually besides would, Garth Brooks, we actually would not. There are actually a couple of Chris Gaines songs. The one, the only Chris Gaines songs that are readily available on YouTube are pretty well done covers. Actually, so somebody beat us to this. Somebody's beat us to it. I, I just wanted to do a uh, shout out a couple of the people who sent us uh, uh, tweets. Uh, at Stump Chuckman, his just says why. Uh, so oh, well, you just heard why you just heard why this hey. one's from special at special cases uh and i guess we just answered this when will we finally get a proper follow-up he was the voice of a generation <laughs> and uh we all want one i don't think garth is going to give it to us anytime soon but we want one look we could take random pop songs that have been released in the last five years have garth brooks cover them yeah, and that's the new Chris Gaines album. That's yeah. how generic and sort of formulaic the album was. But it was. It was you could even just release it on the internet and say yeah. this was a lost album by yeah. Chris Gaines. Or yeah. we could do a tribute album. You just take a couple of random ass songs and go, "Yeah, this was off of this." Because that's what they basically did well, with. Well, the other thing, yeah, it's like a album. David Hasselhoff. Well, album you know what? I was going to, I was going to a copy of the Return I, when I would, he like falls off the sex wagon. <laughs> 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 well, I was going to compare it to the way they could have marketed this thing. 1999. This might not have been the biggest movie of 99, but it was the most talked about. Blair Witch. It could have very easily just been like, there's this album that we uncovered a lost rock star nobody knows anything about. And if they had been more mysterious about it, it would have been a weird ass shot in the dark. But this whole thing was a weird ass shot in the dark. And they could have done it like Blair Witch. Or here's the thing. The timeline has worked in the sense where Chris Gaines releases an album in 1999, right? And then he reemerges much like Meatloaf. Meatloaf released Bat Out of Hell yep. in 1977. He reemerges in the makes 90s. Bat 2 yep. in the 90s. Yeah. He can do that because yeah. he's Chris Gaines. That's yep. true. Gaines Voice too. of a generation. Yeah, yeah, but if you put that on a long enough Meatloaf timeline, it really goes off the fucking That's rails. Right. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to, this is, the la- this is the last question. I think this is the question. Sure. Uh, it comes to us from uh, Blake James uh, on Twitter at Fakey underscore McFaker. And uh, this is the damn question. Was Garth Brooks actually Chris Gaines' alter ego? Shit, that's a whole new universe. It consider. really is, man. Fakey underscore McFaker. Isn't that isn't that like being like is is Batman Batman or is Bruce Wayne Batman? Bruce Wayne Batman. Or is, yeah, is, is Batman, Batman Bruce Wayne? Bruce well, Wayne is Batman because which, only Superman is who he really says he is when well, he's a superhero. I mean, if you just relate back to my original thing in which Garth Brooks is the product that was created by the Dark Underlords in Nashville, <laughs> and he's really Chris Gaines, and there's like you know ancient aliens and stuff involved, you know, maybe deep down we're all chris gaines i mean yeah that's the message of the lamb it's a cautionary tale we could all be chris gaines well god damn it guys we it did was it. good having you we, on the show Jim, that was by the way. I I this. So. This, is, this is fun it's like it's indulging in something that like i guarantee you if i was like i'll just I'm randomly. so happy I ran into you at the open yeah, mic Tuesday. Yeah, no, you brought up yeah. Chris Gaines. I was like, I have a lot of useless information yeah, about Chris yeah. Gaines. And it was, was a deep, this is, yeah. the, you know, this, this is one of our, our deep dives, and I'm so happy with it. And we've been promising it forever, so I hope you enjoyed it. Jim, uh, where can people find you online? I have a Twitter, which is just Jim Hegarty, H-E-G-A-R-T-Y. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I, I deleted all my tweets off of there like four months ago. Oh, okay. And then I deactivated my Facebook account like nine months ago. Okay. So I'm like... You can find me on Instagram at Jim Hegarty. Yeah, like that's, find him on yeah. Instagram and uh, uh, look for his uh, brief but hilarious appearance in uh, most underrated goddamn movie of last year. Oh, uh, yeah, Pop, Pop Star. Star, Never Stop Stopping. Uh, never Stop, wait, Never Stop Never Stopping. Never Stop yeah. Never Stopping with Andy Samberg. Oh, uh, that's, yeah. It's Jim's in it for a minute. Like two seconds. It was filmed on an iPhone. And I was in the theater by myself uh, on the weekend it came out, so it did, it did very well, laughing my fucking ass off. And then just as an added little cherry on top, I stood up at one point and was like, that's fucking Jim Haggerty. I know that guy. So, <laughs> well, you, the funniest yeah. thing about that was like I, that whole week, the movie came out. I was getting, are you a pop star? Like, yeah. is that, like that's a, I think I had like seven or eight text messages hey, over man. that. Are you and that then guy? when it, when it's, I think it's on, it's streaming on HBO. So every once in a while I'll get a text or someone like sending me a message, like on some sort of social media. That's like, were you a pop star? I was like, yeah. yeah. Nice talking to you after 12 years. <laughs> well, hopefully if they make another Chris Gaines movie. Oh, oh God, I would totally. That too. Also, I mean, shit. You could play Ryan Duffy if you like. You if, know? If well, this... Popstar kind of is a little Chris Gaines-esque. 
Yeah. Oh, there's uh, there's elements yeah, to it. There's yeah. elements to it. With That's that something you put on your resume because you are prepared for yeah. this. Yeah. Like so. I said, I mean, and you know, if uh, if this episode somehow gets to either Garth Brooks or Jeb Stewart, the <sighs> the writer of the film, we'll make the damn thing for cheap. Can I we give them? Can. can I say quick things to them? Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 Garth Brooks. I love it. We may be making fun of you, but Chris Gaines, in my mind, it was a wonderful idea. I, Jeb Stewart, like Custer whipped your ass at Yellow Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lovingly, like, we we are caringly ribbing him about This is we, the first time I've yeah. really li- spent any time with this album. I heard yeah. the single and I heard uh, uh, the rap song, but I listened to the whole thing. I kind of like it. it the, it's me, catchy. It's, it's like catchy. formulaic pop, but it's like... It's Starbucks pop, but yeah. it's it's when, nice. When he did it, it was dumb, but it gave me a respect for the guy as being a little more than just like another like manufactured country. Exactly. Ad. It's like he's yeah. going to try some crazy like David Bowie shit. Sure. More yeah. more country yeah. music. You know, if he'd either laid into the persona, yeah. like unflinchingly, like Bowie would have done. Or, or just done the Taylor just, Swift thing and be like, suck it. I'm a pop star now. Yeah. yeah. He could have been... We could have been talking about in the life of Chris Gaines as... Revolution. As, well, it would be like, like, no, have whole, you whole. have you listened to 1989 yet? It's actually really good. Like, yeah, <laughs> sort of, yeah, exactly. Actually, I just got her new album, and I'm like listening to it. It came it came out on Friday. That's how kind of lame this like this two days ago. Yeah, but I I I downloaded it, and you're just like, oh, that's just catchy stuff. She got producers that make catchy music, yeah, and yeah. it's good. yeah. So find us on Facebook, Facebook.com/slash <laughs> The Goods Pod. We're on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Check out all of our Chris Gaines stuff from this episode, and uh, <laughs> vote on our poll <laughs> on who does it uh and uh it's tommy everybody <laughs> tommy did it it was duffy with the chainsaw on the bus i promise uh and uh, the chainsaw is the red herring <laughs> uh i think the the sketchy manager is the red herring but anyway mm. uh and uh do all that and special shout out to our friend richard eating up there in the north pole doing the hard work at the goods pod dot com pat what should the folks do when they get to itunes uh they should go onto itunes and type in the search field the life of chris Gaines" and <laughs> spend your hard-earned 9.99 on that uh and then go to it's not on spotify there are, it, yeah you gotta buy that this shit is hard to find you have to buy it everybody uh but you you should go and rate review and subscribe share the word uh hey this is a chris Gaines episode I think we're the first podcast to get into Chris Gaines. Yeah, all right? I would guarantee you there's probably another one that got into. Well, fuck them. We're yeah, starting yeah. a war. We, we, take... went, we went deeper than Yeah, this yeah. is a deep dive, baby. <laughs> Rate, reviews, and subscribe. Tell a friend. Shows the attitude of gratitude. And if y'all don't have the attitude of gratitude, then y'all can take a dive off a of Malibu Canyon or a little red Corvette while you listen into the zoo crew. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next week. The Goods from the Woods was mixed, edited, and distributed by me, Rivers Langley. You can find the show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Our theme song was composed by DJ Smiles. Check him out on Twitter at DJ Smiles. <laughs> <laughs>